think we're working. I think it moved over. Hello, anybody uh, who's watching and the YouTube universe that'll see this later. Uh, if you don't know who I am, this is the first time we're streaming in a while. My name is Malice Darren. I'm the Guild Master Dragonheart's Guild. Uh, tonight, I am joined by a guest, um, and we're going to be building some D&D 5th Edition Level 1 characters uh, for a one-shot that I will be running uh, this weekend. So let's let's get into this. Flawless content creator intro. Yeah, I have a long intro. It's a real cringy intro, and I've been told <laughs> just that it's really sucky and that I don't need to do it every single time, and I will continue to do it every single time. That's when it just becomes the meme. Hey, my content can be can be a meme, and I'm okay with that. Content is content. Everything is content. And all content is good content. And I wouldn't say that. Okay, so we're going to be using... Where's my pen? Uh, I'm literally... We're just going to start page one of classes and do them in, alpha, in, in order. Because that's going to be easier. We'll do a variety of races. I think we'll do the races that fit each class the best in terms of role play. Because uh, that'll be fun. And then for stats, I'm going to just use the pre-built. So we're going to be using standard array. So we're going to be using 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. So you, you have a level 1 character, right? You're not the best thing in the world but you can have a high stat in what should be your main stat then you have your dump stats um and you'll only have one thing that's a negative so right of you we use thing that matters the least yeah so we use 15 14 13 12 10 8 so we'll let that down good for a bard rogue be what would a bard rogue be? Like a multi class? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of how that would work. Um I mean race, halfling, or gnome, so you're small. Cause to me to me the perfect bard is is a gnome or a halfling. Because you're short, you're funny. I mean uh, all races make a good bard, but when you're short and stuff like that, you got the sneak. The halfling's lucky uh, ability to reroll ones is great for a rogue. A rogue that can a rogue and a and a bard that can never roll a one. Yes. Amazing. With eloquence college. If you went that far in both, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make this easy on myself. I'm gonna pull up the list on my screen too. So I'm not just flipping back and forth through the book for everything. Um Thank you, D and D Beyond, for having the basic list. Uh, we're just going to be using Player's Handbook. We're going to keep things real simple. Um, and then give me the class list. Thank you. Um, perfect. 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 Okay. And then. Yeah, okay. So, let's start with a barbarian. So, we're going to have class is going to be barbarian. It's going to be barbarian level 1. Um, what race should the barbarian be? Goliath. We're not we're not picking things outside of the player's handbook. Oh, then I got to pull up the player's handbook. So here, let me just send you the link. I have I have the player's handbook. No, 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 no. This is the link just so you can quickly look at things. Um, I have D and D Beyond open. D and D on has the race and the uh, classes page, and it shows you what book everything is from. So I can look at them, and then I can pull it up in the book. So I don't need to 
have them all memorized. Um, even though I could probably name all of them off the top of my head, it would probably just take me more of a minute. We're going to, how do I make chat pop out so I can pop it? There we go. Are we doing players races then? Yeah, we're, we're going to just okay. keep everything in the player's handbook. Half orc. Half orc makes good sense to me. Hold on, I'm messing with visuals on the screen. I'm yeah, I'm literally watching this the entire time. I will be watching your stream. That's fine. I it was I pop chat out so I could move it like to my screen where I, where I can actually like see it more, and then I realized it started to mess with everything else, even though it shouldn't have. Like, I like how it's wiggling, but it's keeping the dimensions the same, because it's looking at it in full. Okay, that should work enough to where I can see. Ew. In the event somebody talks in the chat, I'll see something. Um, okay, so... Half, half or I like half or Dragonborn could be cool, but I like Dragonborn Paladins. And we can double up, That's too, because there's... Too. Six, eight, nine... There's 12 classes, and there's nine races so we'll double up at some point or we might not use no we'll do everything i feel like half orc works best for barbarian yeah okay we'll go half orc spike tight there we go half orc all right so let's go over to half orc uh we're gonna leave names Character names blank and player names blank because these are just going to be usable at level one characters. Um, and we're not going to be filling out, um, or we can fill out bits, but like age, eyes, height, skin, weight, hair, we're not going to be filling out appearances and stuff because this is that. And then if we're really lucky, we don't need to fill out anything on spells. Um, but we will pick spells if we have to. Okay, so let's assign some stats uh, when we look at Barbarian. And I should really have bookmarks in this flipping book. So Barbarians are a strength-based class. And the Half-Orc itself gets a strength increase by 2 and a con increase of 1. So do we want to assign... The 14 to strength, so it goes up to 16, and then put the 15 in con, so it goes up to 16? Or do we want to get the strength up to 17? How, how do you think we should do this? Because I'm going to keep this very, like, open between both of us. Let's go with, like, pretty well-rounded, I guess. We can go rounded, but for, for first stat wise, where do you we're not gonna be well rounded with fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, ten, eight. Um Well as as rounded as we can be. Yeah. I th I think we should I think we should go best best for class. So I think we put the fourteen in strength. We put the fifteen in con. Um We put the eight, put the eight, eight in dex. Should dex be our dump stat, or should we? No, I feel like intelligence should be our dump stat, or a barbarian. Not the wisest things in the world. Yeah, pretty much. I think everything except for eight. This the sorcerer and the wizard should probably dump intelligence. Uh, I don't know. What other but, classes uh, are gonna benefit from it? Well, not benefit, but uh, look, look at a rogue. In terms of role play, I think having a really intelligent rogue with no wisdom could be really funny. Yeah, I guess you're, that would work. So you're a, you're a rogue ways. who has all the book smarts and the street smarts. Okay, so that will put the eight in intelligence. Um, Ten in wisdom. 12 in dex, 13 in charisma, or other way around? 
either way. I think it should be 13, 12. 13 in Dex, 12 in, in Charisma. Okay. And then, so due to ability score increase, I gotta stop putting my phone on top of my mouse cable. Don't fall on my keyboard. Um, okay, so then that 14 becomes a 16 from that 2, and that con goes from a 15 to a 16 from that 1. So that's pretty good there. So then we can round out those. I need the table because I never have it fucking memorized. Okay, so that 16 brings us to the plus 3 area. That dex that's 13 is the plus 1 area. 16 is plus 3 again. That 8, that's going to be a minus 1. Wisdom 10, that's going to be a flat 0. And charisma at 12 just gets us into plus one. Okay, so I think we're pretty solid there. Um, and then we'll fill out all of those. Okay, it's gonna be a strength. Uh, plus three, and then anything that's strength based. Oh, yeah, I always forget athletics is your only strength based skill, which I think is nuts. Okay, dex is a plus one. Acrobatics. Okay, so here's my question for you. Uh, when you're filling out a paper character sheet and you, you're proficient in something and you check mark it, do you change what's written in your box? What do you mean? So, like, in a roll 20, when you... So, say I'm proficient in athletics, and because I'm a level 1, I have the proficiency bonus of 1. If you click that box, when you click it, this becomes a 4. It is telling you your total within a roll 20, so when you hit athletics to roll it, it will roll it with the plus 4. The way I do it is I will just check mark it, and that check mark is my acknowledgement that you add your proficiency bonus because you are proficient. Otherwise, on paper, if you forget to, when you gain a proficiency bonus, if you change this to four, you will then sometimes add the one for five at level one when you shouldn't, or you'll forget that you needed to add stuff. So I just leave that as my marker to, ah, yes, I checked this, so I will always add this. And this is its base. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I'd probably just go with the check marks. Yeah. It's been a long time since I played paper. I like paper. Con is gonna be plus three. I like I like being at the table better than what we do with roll twenty, but roll twenty is just convenient. It is convenient. Um there's no constitution skills. Intelligence is gonna be minus one. There's nothing quite like the table experience. I think, I don't know, I can count on like one hand the number of times we've played at the table. Okay, wisdom is zero. And then charisma is plus one. What's Rowan watching in the background? Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I like. I'm hearing bits and pieces of it, and my immediate thought was, "Is that loud enough for a copyright strike?" And I'm like, "No," because I can barely hear it. So I don't think it's too guild currency. I don't think that it can be heard. Okay, and then a proficiency bonus at level one. It's just plus one. Okay. So that's good. 
Okay, what else do we get from Half Orc? Um, we'll leave alignments blank too, because I don't flip it care what alignments are. Um, size is medium. Well, not everything medium. I don't have to. I don't have to put that on there. Um. Okay. We got. Helmet size speed. So speed's gonna be thirty. Our armor class right now is. Just remembered. We're gonna need pencils. Yes. Yes, you will. Or, or pens. But you gotta scratch off a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, pencils will be easier. I'll just grab pencils tomorrow when I go to the store. Or not tomorrow, but Saturday, I guess. I gotta remember. I'm gonna put these on flash drive and put them out at work. On I was I was thinking to myself, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be at work tomorrow. I can't print these out. I was like, no, wait, I have to go to work Saturday. <laughs> print them out at work on Saturday. You can just upload them to your Google Docs. Print them out when you get there. Nah, I'm just gonna save it on the flash drive. Um, your base armor is ten plus your dex, right? Barbarians yeah, get the barbarian. plus con. Barbarians get the plus con, but I'm not there yet. I'm just determined. Well, no, I mean I'll, we'll get that when we finish the stats. Yeah, it, but it's 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 ten. Start ten plus dex. That again, the negative dex can bring it down. Barbarians get the plus con, monks get plus wisdom, and then that's your total. And then light armor gets the plus dex. Um, medium armor gets the plus dex. Heavy armor doesn't get the dex. And that's when you get the disadvantage on stealth checks. That's what it is. Okay. Um, Alright, so speed. Well, okay, they have dark vision. So we're going to put dark vision under I feel like dark vision goes under proficiencies. No, should dark vision go would you consider dark vision a proficiency or a, a trait, a feature and trait? I feel like that's a feature and trait. Uh, it's like infinitely usable, all right. Yeah, it's your ability to see in the dark. Then I would put it in features and traits. Okay, so they have dark vision they are menacing. So that means they gain proficiency in intimidation. So they're going to get that right off the bat. I hope you will remember what all of these do on Saturday night. I So my immediate thought was, fuck, I need to get note cards and write out everybody's spells. And then I went, no, fuck that. We're going to get at the table and I'm going to go use your phone and look up your spells. Because that is going to be the easiest thing. Is look up your spells so you know what they do. And when it comes time to casting it, we'll just flip to the page in the book. Yeah, we'll have the iPad there. Yeah, and and the part of me is, is like, I'll figure... Because we have to look at the spells anyways when we're picking them. Next to the spell on your spell list, I will note the page it's on. <laughs> but spells are in alphabetical order, so it's not that hard to find them. Um, it's not that hard. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot they have Relentless Endurance. Savage attacks. If I can make it fit, because these are level ones, we'll write it out like this. When you reduce to zero but not already killed, kind of obvious. Um, if something would instantly kill you, relentless endurance would not save you. Um, it's just a way to bring you back up to one. Um, and then they get savage attacker.
I think it's attacks, not attacker. Savage attacks. Attacks, attacker. Savage attacker's a feat. Uh, no, that's a paladin thing, savage attacker. No, it's a feat. It's it's a feat. It's a paladin. My paladin has it. I just can't remember if it's a feat or if it's just a thing he has. Wanna crit with melee. Okay, and then languages, they get orc and shaman. Oh, I didn't know that. Orc is written in Dwarvish script. Did not know that. Speak, read, and write common and orc. Orc is a harsh created language with hard... Consonant. It has no script of its own, but it's written in Dwarvish script. Okay. Orc traits. Okay, so that does it on what it gets as an orc. So then, let's give it a background. I gotta pull up the fucking background list. Damn it. Okay, can you, yes, only give me, um, so we'll use evil companion, that's fine, because that's technically just core, but slightly expanded, we'll use player's handbook, we'll do dungeon master's guide. Okay, that works. Okay, so we have a barbarian who's a half orc. What should his background be? We've got the acolyte, the charlatan, criminal, enter uh, entertainer, folk hero, gladiator, guild artist, and guild merchant, hermit, knight, noble, outlander, pirate, sage, sailor, soldier, urchin. I kind of like outlander. I kind of like gladiator. I think we should do. Gladiator for Barbarian mm -hmm. and Outlander for the Fighter. Outlander for the Fighter. I can see it being the other way around, too. Let's flip to both and see how they're described. Criminal Charlatan Folk. Hermit noble. So the outlander is you grew up in the wilds, far from civilization and the comforts of town or technology. You witness the migration of herds of larger than forests, survived weathered more than extreme, uh, survived weather more extreme than any city dweller could comprehend, and enjoy the solitude of being the only thinking creature for miles in any direction. The wilds are in your blood, whether you were a nomad or an explorer a recluse, a hunter, gatherer, or even a marauder. Even in places where you don't know the specific features of the terrain, you know the ways of the wild. That's Outlander. And then... Maybe save that for, like, the ranger and the druid, then. Well, so... A hermit works good. I mean, we can double up here on things, because, like... Yeah. I don't know. If our, if our druid is a folk hero, that's kind of funny to me. <laughs> Um, a 
but we're not building like backstories for these guys, so we can double up on stuff. The, this barbarian could have been a soldier too. It's just he's not the smartest soldier in the bunch. Um, it could have been an urchin. Where is Gladiator? I know I must have passed over Gladiator. Gladiator's in though. Isn't it? What page is it on? Was it something that got printed later in the player's handbook? And I just have an old copy of the handbook. It's an acolyte. A gladiator. Archolite, charlatan, criminal. Entertainer. Full hero. Guild artist in. And then it goes to hermit. And gladiator should be in between those. But it says it's from player's handbook. Backgrounds. Oh. Backgrounds one twenty five. Oh, acolyte, charlatan, criminal, entertainer. You got a lot of shit. Old artisan, hermit, noble, outlander, sage, sailor, soldier, urchin. These are all in alphabetical order, right? Yeah, they're yeah, it's in alphabetical order. So I'm either like totally glancing over it or it's not in my copy of the book. But it says it's in it says it's in the player's handbook on D and D Beyond. It says it's a part of that. Uh, so it goes from Folk Hero to Guild Artisan slash merchant. Yeah. EFG. To, to Hermit. Yeah. So it's not in there. Unless it's like a variant for soldier. Maybe. Are you using a physical book? No. I have the PDF up. Okay. So I was thinking maybe it's a, it's a PDF only. Okay. The rest of these are, are here. Maybe it's a variant for soldier. Um, well, yeah, because I also have, I have criminal spine. No, 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 that's there. Um, okay, let me read Soldier. Maybe it is a variant within Soldier. The same way Noble has a variant, but... No, Noble has a suggested... Um, soldier. Sailor. Soldier. I don't see it under Soldier either. Nope. I know I know Gladiator is an option. Yeah, I know, I know I have it is, it too. too. Um... D&D Gladiator, Division Gladiator, background. Okay, let me just... I have... I can see a variant on the D&D Wiki. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I hit Entertainer on accident. Oh, it, Entertainer. Gladiator is a variant of Entertainer. It's a variant of Entertainer? Yeah, because are you not entertained? I know. It's weird that it's an Entertainer, though. Oh, you're right. There it is. Did you notice that, or did Rowan notice that? Because I heard her say something. No, I didn't even hear her say anything. Okay, I thought I heard her in the background. I, I went to uh, the D&D 5e wiki. Yeah. And I just clicked on Gladiator and it pulls up Entertainer and then just says Variance Gladiator. Okay, so its difference is animal handling, survival, one type of artisan's tools, 
And a land vehicle? Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, if you're a gladiator, you have a cart. You could be proficient at carts. Um, okay. No, then I don't think gladiator would be good for a barbarian. Then the same way I thought it would. Um, okay, so... Outlander Hermit. Um, sailor. Barbarian Sailor could be cool. So or Soldier. What do you what, what you thinking? Because I'm cool with almost any of these. A soldier do? Ooh, you know what would be good for the fighter? Urchin. They were just a street urchin who learned to fight for themselves. Yeah, that barbarian would work for that too, wouldn't it? Yeah, but to me, it's like if you're alone on the streets learning to defend yourself, you become a fighter, not a barbarian. But my idea of a barbarian will always be Dave the Barbarian. Remember that cartoon? Yeah. I like that. Um, what do you think? Soldier, urchin, sailor. For, barbarian. for the barbarian? Yeah. I Outlander could still work, but you're right. We could save that for, like, the druid. Um, uh, um, let me grab soldier. Uh, proficient in athletics, intimidation, one type of gaming set, vehicles, land, uh, no extra languages, equipment, an insignia of rank, a trophy taken from a fallen enemy, a dagger, a work of blade, a piece of banner, a set of bone dice, or a deck of cards, a set of common clothes, and a pouch containing 10 gold. Uh, soldier would probably work. Yeah, soldier. Dumb and tough. We'll give him a low rank. Okay, yeah, we'll go with soldier. Okay, so they're a soldier, so they get a skill proficiency in athletics and intimidation. Hey, they already have intimidation from being a halfling. So they just get athletics. Um, one type of gaming set. Do you want to pick a gaming set? We got land vehicles. And then a gaming set. What are the gaming sets? They are a set of bone dice or a deck of cards. For a soldier? No, there's a whole bunch more than there's a whole bunch more that you can choose from. That's what they get in their equipment. But no. in the tool proficiencies, they get to pick what gaming set they are proficient in. So gaming sets include dice, cards, 
Um, I'm looking for what it was. Oh, it's game. There's dice, dragon chess, cards, three dragon ante. The deck of silly things. The deck. No, you're not proficient in the. Let's just say dice set. The proficient in dice and dice throwing. Dice the game. Um. Have you ever looked up? So, do you remember from Pirates of the Caribbean? Two when they're playing pirates dice or they're playing dead men's die whatever the name of the dice is called the dice mm -hmm. game's called i was looking up trying to figure out what the rules are to that game because there, there is rules it's an actual game but the rules are like confusing with it and i'm reading it and i'm like this would be really fun to play but like me trying to work out what these rules are i can't in my head i actually need like another person like two two other people to do this with um or one other person to like, hey, is this we're doing this right, right? And uh, yeah, but that would be fun for the a pirate campaign. It'd be fun regardless of pirate campaign. I think within it, within my world, if you go, oh, I want to play, it's liars dice. That's what it is. Um, let me Google that to confirm. I think that's what it was. Um. Yeah, it's Liar's Dice. Ooh, you can actually buy... The, there's a dice set for it? You can buy... It's $110 to buy the dice set off of Walmart for the Pirates of the Caribbean dice set to play Liar's Dice. That is ridiculous. It is four cups and four sets of six dice. Sorry, four sets of five D6s. Where the six or the one is a pirate skull, that is a ridiculous price. On eBay, it's fifty bucks. Okay, yeah, liars dice. So I think within my what what's nice when you get to like D and D and it's like oh I want to play a game like a card game. You can roll to like determine the card game, but if you decide on what that game is, you can literally play that game at the table within D and D as your characters play liars dice where you're lying and instead and the, the point of the game is is lying about what you have instead of needing to roll deception to determine the outcome. No, you were legitimately just playing a game within a game with each other. <laughs> And I like that idea. They just mess with so many people. Okay. So then your equipment. Um, you have an insignia of rank. What rank should we be? I don't think they're an officer. They're not a healer. I know we're supposed to roll. A D8. Um, why can't your... Why can't your rank just be soldier? <laughs> you weren't high. You were just a footman. But your op the options are officer, soldier... Uh, officer, scout, infantry, cavalry, healer, quartermaster, stand standard bearer, or support staff. I'm going to make a ruling that your insignia of rank is you're just a soldier. <laughs> That's uh, for, for barbarians, I would say, like, scout or infantry. You'd put them as infantry? Yeah, infantry are people going first. Okay, I'll put infantry. And say the rank, you were in the infantry. The military rank, you as a soldier. You're in the organization. You're free to rank if you are a lower rank. Invoke. You can invoke your rank to exert influence over other soldiers and requisition simple equipment or horses for temporary use. This is going to be funny because what I, I'm going to put like a guild master above <laughs> most rankings within it. And if you're talking to the guild master, like, I demand horses. It's like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> you piece of scum, no. Footman, you get nothing. Um, let me get the feature of military rank. Uh, 
Um, okay, suggested characteristics. Um, let's flip and roll dice for this, because why the f it, it is... Yeah, it's, this is going to be easier for us to roll dice than for me to try and determine, hey, this is going to be best for this character that I'm not playing, because these are just level ones. Okay, so we're going to roll a d8. Let's get open my regular dice bag. Blorps. Huh? The Blorps. The Blorps. I don't know. That's a d10. Where's my d8? There's a d8. Okay. Let's not drop my dice on the ground. Because I can't read what's at the back of my desk. And we're going to grab my... Oh, are you looking at my stream right now? I just hold this up on camera so you can see it. I got... This came in. I ordered... It's the new Pepe. They are Blizzard released. It's the, it's the Bastion Pepe. So he's all blue. He's got this spear on his back. And he's so cute. Is that an owl construct? No, it's a bird. It's Pepe. Pepe the bird. I have all the Pepe the birds. I got Pirate Pepe. He's on my desk. I got regular Pepe. He's buried on my desk. Uh, Ninja Pepe is in my office. Traveler Pepe is in my room. There's Traveler Pepe in here and regular Pepe is in there. I don't know. I have all of them. Um, okay, let's roll it. The eight. It's going to be a five. So personality trait is I can stare down a hellhound without flinching. Cool. Is there no ability for me to change, like, font size in this? No, I don't think there is. That's dumb. Um, oh, wait, I think if I just type more, it gets itself smaller. Okay, so ideals, I need a D6. It's going to be a 2. Responsibility. I do what I must, and I obey just authority. Lawful. Wow, I can't type when nothing. Okay. Uh, bonds. That's gonna be another D six. That's gonna be a six. I fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. Themselves. Okay, and then flaws. That's another. D6. It's going to be a two. That's funny. So your bond is I will fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, but their flaw is I have little respect for anyone who is not a, pro a proven warrior. <laughs> it's in character for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's funny to me. Um, okay, so that covers that. We're going to scooch. I need to clean off my desk again. <laughs> I got too much shit on my desk. Put the dice back over there. I'm going to keep those two dice in the dice tray. Okay, so let's go back to equipment because you get the rest of your equipment. Um, you're using it right. You get a trophy taken from a fallen enemy. Uh, what do you want that trophy to be? Tooth, ear of an elf, ear, ear of a goblin. Um, you're a barbarian. What do you think? The examples here are a, a dagger, a broken blade, a piece of a, a piece of a banner. I like the broken blade. Yeah, I like broken. Blade. No banners, more sense. You you take part. Of, yeah, broken. 
Empty piece of banner. Piece of banner. my auto spell check when I need it. T-R-O L P H O Y no E. Oh, I'll set a bone dice. Common clothes, and you get a pouch containing 10 gold. Good to get 10 gold pieces, okay. That does it for background. So then, let's go all the way back and fill out the barbarian shit. And then let's do this 11 more fucking times. Maybe it was a bad idea to say, hey, we're going to do this for every... Everything. Oh no, you say you have a proficiency on two level one. And you get inspiration. I'll check that by hand. Okay. So, uh, your hit points are 12 plus con at level one. So, 12 plus con is going to be a nice 15. Fifteen, no temporary hit points. Armor proficiencies. You get light armor, medium armor, and shields. Simple martial weapons. I feel like when you get simple and martial weapons, you can just write all weapons. Martial weapon cover heavy weapons? Yes. Weapons, if you scroll to weapons, when they are broken up. No weapons are fire. What level four spells? Nope. Still in classes. weapons you have your simple melee weapons simple ranged weapons martial melee weapons martial ranged weapons so when you get simple weapons and martial weapons simple weapons include the club dagger great axe hand axe javelin light hammer mace quarter staff sickle spear and then martial is in includes any even the heavy stuff that's all a martial weapon you just have sit. You have melee and you have ranged, so you have simple melee, simple ranged, martial melee, martial ranged. The only difference. Okay, no tools. You get a saving throw of strength and constitution. Back to the strength, constitution. So then skills. We get to choose two. So, animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, survival. Now, we already have intimidation and athletics, which is nice. So, we have animal handling, nature, perception, survival. We get two. I feel like a barbarian's not going to be animal handling. Nature's probably not good. So, I like perception and survival as the, op as the options. What do you think? Gwen, hmm? what do you think for our skills? Oh, the stream got grainy for a sec. There it, it is. It doesn't. We can choose two from animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, survival, and we already have athletics and intimidation, so I'm leaning towards perception and survival as the two we get to pick. Yes. 
Okay. Take perception. I always like the idea of taking survival and shit. Survive. Hold on, perception might be a bad idea. Because we have a zero. He's very... We have a zero in perception. And we have a zero in, in survival. So you, we get the plus two. So. We have a minus one in nature. Oh, we have a. That's an intelligence. Nature is intelligence based. Oh. See, this is where you're like, oh, you can't make everything a dump stat. Um. Okay, so we get that. So then equipment, we can have a great axe or a martial melee weapon. I'm just going to go with great axe and two hand axes. We'll keep this simple. Okay, we'll go great axe, two hand axe, four javelins. have an explorer's pack. Okay, then your attacks would be great axe. Hand axe. Javelin. Well, I'm going to copy those. Strength based character, you get your strength bonus plus proficiencies in these. Javelins, though, I don't think you get the proficiency in because javelins, I think, are under ranged. They're throwing yeah. weapons. It's a throwing weapon, but it's, is it classified as a ranged weapon or not? Does it fall under simple melee ranged? No javelins fall under simple melee. So you continue to get your proficiency in these. Um, okay, so a great axe damage type is 1d12 slashing. Twenty twelve slash, but is heavy and two handed. I'm not gonna add that here. It's a heavy two handed. So your attack bonus here would be for your strength. So the three, so you get a plus five to your roll and a plus five to your damage. Um, hand axe is 1d6 slashing. 1d6 slashing. Um, and has light and it's thrown with a range of 20 60. And javelins are 1d6 piercing. Piercing, and they have a range of 30 to 120. I will be right back. Okay. Javelin throw. Okay, and then 
get range. Defense, line of defense, it's going to be 10 plus dex plus con. So 10 plus dex plus 1 plus con, 3, 8, 7, 6, 14, armor class of 14. Um, your initiative is your dex bonus. Minus one to a no, sir. It's plus one. It's based on your dex. Plus one. is 10 plus wisdom of zero plus the proficiency we took proficiency passive 12 um hit die we will do 12 total damage is one I think that finishes them up. They get no spells, no nothing extra. That finishes our barbarian. Okay. Yeah, okay. One down. One down. Many to go. Many to go. Smiles, hands. one half orc soldier barbarian I should be barbarian soldier barbarian sorry you can't see my file extensions oh boy this is being saved barbarian soldier excellent Okay. Cool, and then now we're on the next one. Took an hour, took an hour to build one <laughs> character. Oh, okay. It's gonna be a long, long stream. Which means after Barbarian is our bard. Our Barbarian. One.
Tuh, 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 tuh. Tweet out that hey, you know, we, we finished a character. Many, many, many more to go. Many, many, many more to go. Not that many. Huh? So it's not that many. We have eleven more we have to make. It took us an hour to make one. Make Which a bunch next tonight, to the bar. Get the rest tomorrow. Huh? and make a bunch tonight, make the rest tomorrow. Yeah, I can stream again tomorrow. I got nothing going on tomorrow. Um, Hidden Fortress moved their Friday thing to next week, so. Because their thing didn't show up for uh, what they were putting in the shop. Okay, so Bard. Bard's next. I'm leaning Tiefling. towards Halfling. Or no. I like the Halfling more. Thoughts? Gnome? So I feel like halfling would be funnier for the rogue. We could have, we could have a halfling gnome and a halfling rogue. Roll a d20? Sure. Uh, 11 or higher. Uh, uh l lower halfling, higher gnome. Higher gnome? Shouldn't it be higher, should be halfling because gnomes are smaller and should have the lower numbers? Sure. <laughs> Hi, Brownie. Huh? Chris's dog just came out. I'm in the kitchen. Ah, okay. Hey, Over Brownie. 20. That's going to be a 17, so that's going to be halfling. Halfling race. Do we want to just pick background now? That way we we already know what we're going with. Yeah, I okay. just do all the stuff and then add up all the equipment at the end. Yeah, so I'm thinking entertainer. Folk hero could be good. Uh, entertainer's probably fine. I'm leaning, yeah, I'm leaning towards entertainer. All right, so bards are a charisma beast. How about an intelligent bard that has no charisma or wisdom? Hey, that'd be funny. But you wouldn't be able to cast anything. Yeah. Oh, fuck, we got to deal with spell stat too. Okay. Um Okay, so charisma. Oh actually hold on, let's look before we get to that. Let's see what halflings get as their bonuses. Brave luck. No, I mean what their ability score bonuses are. That's why I said tiefling, because tieflings get charisma. T I f tiefling is a good warlock, though. We can double up on the races. Yeah, we can. Halflings get a bonus to dex. So dex what about a halfling two. warlock? It's a tiny, tiny little evilness. Yeah, it could be funny, too. I think if we're building stereotypes, uh, 
It's stereotypical, uh, though. It's a halfling. And the tiefling's a warlock. A gnome warlock. Gnome warlock. Gnome engineers. Because then they can be Vagar. Vagar? Vagar from League. Ah. Ligar? Vagar? I don't know who you're talking about. Vagar. What lane is he? Mid lane. Little blue dude. Big Oral. Not Fizz. The mage caster. The one that throws the bombs? No, that's Ziggs. The little wizard dude. Vigar. It's it, but it is it, it's pronounced Vagar. It's pronounced Vagar? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. I've been saying Vigar forever. It's E I. Vagar sounds weird. There's a fly, like, right in front of me. Come on. Come to a point where I can catch you. Because you're just jumping on my screen, and I'm not going to hit my monitor. I think I got him. Nope. Didn't. I got part of his wing on my hand. He's floating around all stubbly. Come on, you bastard. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you one day. Okay. Um, okay, so, Bard. Charisma, Halfling, is get a plus two to their dex. So we can make dex our dump stat, and then it's plus two brings it up to ten, so we don't have any minuses. We could do that. Uh, yeah, we can oh. do that. That sounds actually fine. It just means we don't get a bonus on initiative, so our dex is going to be eight. Strength 10. Intelligence 12. Wisdom 13. Charisma 15. Constitution 14. Does that look good to you? Yeah. Okay. And then our dex becomes a 10 from halfling trait. Um. Halfling size is small. I feel like that's really just something you can remember. Because your size is on... I swear your size was written on the top of your sheet or something. I don't know. I, if someone brought it up, halflings are small, gnomes are small, everything else is medium. Are goliaths large? I think goliaths are medium, but if it's... But when something is cast on them to move them, they are considered a large creature. But they are a medium. Weird. I'm surprised that Goliaths weren't part of the player's handbook. Um, well, I think it's because you have the half-orc. That Goliath... What book was Goliath? Goliath fell under... Uh, oak... Mm, Technically, we could consider... Go so, Goliaths is in the Elemental Evil Player's Companion, which is a free companion that's, like, things that I think they are just like, oh, we forgot to put in the book. Because in older editions, Goliath was just a base race. Yeah, so... I mean, te technically, play Evil Companion is is technically players, like, in my head, because that includes the Aarakocra and the Janazi. But if we're keeping things simple, then we're not. We're not using it. In, yeah, in well, this. that everybody will have their choice of that stuff in the big game. Yeah. I might. I might limit. I might cut out most of the books and just be like, "Hey, if there's something really specific you want, talk to me, and we'll work it out." Because <laughs> otherwise, I gotta remember to bring a lot more. Like, I don't think anyone's gonna pick. Anything from Last War. No one's going to pick a Warforged, a Shifter, a Changeling, the Kalishtar, or an Orc of Eberron. Mm -mm. I don't think anyone's going to pick a Gith from Tomb of Foes. I don't see anyone picking anything from Ravnica, except may maybe the Luxodon or the Minotaur. No one's going to use Acquisitions Incorporated, because those guys are not really made for combat. Um... 
Oh, did you, did you, there's, we're going to go off topic for a minute. I got to find it. There was this, uh, uh this picture that I, I posted on Instagram. It was, uh, it was called D&D Power Move. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Here's a, it's a, here's a DM Power Move I've done that you should do. Introduce an extremely plot-relevant NPC who speaks exclusively in an ooh voice. I have one, and her name is Squeak. She's a tiny, rotund grunt, but she also says stuff like, let's see if I can do an ooh voice, because I cannot do an ooh voice. The cataclysm has devastated the realm. Refugees are fleeing to the court of the wyverns. It's a bloodbath. <laughs> and my players just have to fucking take it. I kind of like that. I kind of like the idea of doing that to a really important NPC and making them the most annoying thing in the world. And then you just gotta deal with it. You just make it like an escort mission NPC. And if they don't, like, take You're... care of the NPC, just <laughs> everything. They, they're hunted by, like, every kingdom or something. You're escorting um, Absurd, but he's the ruler of the realm. <laughs> Did you watch Dragon Ball uh, Super? I haven't watched any of the Dragon Ball. I saw, I watched, and this is the only thing of Dragon Ball I've seen. I've seen the live action Dragon Ball movie. I want to watch it just for how bad it is. I remember I don't, I don't watching. Know what it is, but they can never make a live action anime right. I know. I remember it coming out, and I remember I was at my grandma's, and like we rented it, like on the DVD, on the, on a, on TV to watch, and like, and then I had to go home, and I didn't get to finish it. I had like thirty minutes left or something, and then it was like two or three weeks later. I went and rewatched the whole thing instead of just watching the last thirty minutes, and then I saw the whole thing, and I just remember being, I was like, okay, like this, this was okay, but it wasn't amazing. But yeah. Okay, so halflings. Let me go. Let's fill this out, and then I will finish filling out that, because then I can just move off of the halfling page. Um, they get the feature. I forgot their speed is less. They have a speed of 25, and then for features, they have lucky. The trait. Buggy trait, they have Brave and Halfling. Halfling nimbleness. Now. Okay, I did spell that right. Okay, and we're going to add halfling to the dictionary. Because um, halfling should be in the dictionary, right? I feel like that's something that should that should be there. I feel like not having halfling in the dictionary is just kind of dumb. Um, okay. It did something on stream and I can't get rid of it. There we go. Um, okay. Halfling nimbleness. Which is just reroll ones. Reroll ones. Brave is advantage on saving throws against being threatened. And halfling nimbleness allows you to move through creatures, move through the space of creatures bigger than you. To put it in easy terms, I don't want to. 
space those out. Oh, I forgot we have to choose our subrace. That's where the other one comes in. Uh, so languages are common and halfling. For human, do we want to do human or variant? We're going to just stick with human for this. Variant human would be giving one person an actual feat in a, one, in a level one one shot. Um, I think is dumb. Okay, so then do we want to go light foot or do we want to go stout? Uh, pros and cons. Uh, light foot is the increase to charisma by one. Stout is an increase to constitution. Uh, light foot is naturally stealthy, so you can attempt to hide even when you're obscured. by. So you can hide behind a creature larger than you. And stout is advantage on saving throws against poison, and you have a resistance to poison damage. I feel like stout, just because light foot is to be more sneaky and well hidden, and you're a bard. So you should but go it, with stout. <laughs> Harder to hit. But Lightfoot gives you that charisma bump. You're right, it does give you the charisma bump. We'll go with Lightfoot. Alright, for Halfling, so that's 15. So it comes to 16. And then you get naturally stealthy. Hide behind. So I attempt to hide. So yeah, you can make the the hide action on those. Okay, that covers race stuff. Let's go bump in the ability score modifiers so strength it's gonna be a big old goose egg dexterity goose egg constitution 14 that's gonna be a plus two intelligence is gonna be a plus one Wisdom plus one and charisma a big ol' plus three. Proficiency bonus is plus two. Alright, so the strength zero. The only strength based thing is athletics. Dex is gonna be a plus zero, so we got Constitution, big ol' plus two. There's, I always forget there's no constitution skills. Intelligence, big ol' plus one. Plus one, and then charisma is going to be big old plus three. Okay. So then let's go to Bard. No, let's go to background. Let's go to Entertainer and get Entertainer out of the way. Okay. 
entertainer. Skill proficiencies are acrobatics and performance. Acrobatics. Performance. Tool proficiencies. Guys, kit. One instrument of choice. What instrument do we want to be proficient in? No, it cannot be clapping. For as funny as that was. Um, we've got bagpipes, drums, the Glucomir Duke Climber. Duke Climber? I don't know what that is. A flute, a lute, a lyre, a horn, a pan flute, a schwam, and a, vi a viol. I feel like a lute. A lute or a lyre. I feel like a lute. A lute's just default. It's in the picture for a bard. Let's go with lute. Ah, uh, the electric lute. The electric lute. I like, th I like that as a magical item. 250 beings were simultaneously impregnated all born. all born with denim jackets there's an entire 17th plane of 250 beings a rumored 17th plane of rock um why is that Hazard. Okay. Um, equipment, a musical instrument, one of your choice. Of course, we're gonna pick the lyre. We we we're proficient in lute, but we're gonna have a lyre. Um, you have a lute. Um, I'm going to make a character at some point, and they are going to be one of those 250 beings in the rumored 17th point. <laughs> That'd be. I've seen people who who run. Um, fantasy high like one shots that like take place within the world that are just like one shots and stuff and they're just like what the hell's <laughs> going on i'm so excited coach for maidens. Oh, it looks it looks good a love letter from an admirer a costume i'm patch can make 15 gold Brennan is playing Zelda, isn't he? Yes, he is. Because That's no one funny. is allowed to play <laughs> play Gargug's girlfriend but him. We all, you know, we didn't roll. I didn't roll on the on the half arc. I didn't roll for his money. I should probably do that. Not that it matters in a one shot, but I should probably roll the money. We should give everybody, like, I don't know, 60. No, I'll, That's not well, like they're going to spend it. No, but different classes have different things. A Barbarian is 2d4 plus ten, uh, times 10. So, where's my d4? Uh, because these, these could be used, uh, I could use these later on and, like, expand out on, like, their backgrounds. And, um backstory and stuff and use these guys so I want to make sure that they are like as ready to go as possible okay so that's going to be a 2 and a roll in the dice tray please 2 and a 4 so that's going to be 6 times 10 that's going to be 60 we go back to the half orc real quick 60 so we get a total of 70 gold So then for the bard, bards are 5d4. That's funny, 5d4, okay. So you get 2, 4, so 6, 9, 12, 14. 
15. Have I? I've said five numbers, right? Did I say five numbers or four numbers? I wasn't counting. <laughs> okay, let's just reroll. One. That's going to be a two. Four. So it's six. Eight. Ten. Eleven. And then one that was more. Five. That was five. Okay, so we're at eleven. So it's eleven times ten. <laughs> they had a hundred and ten gold. That puts them at one hundred and twenty-five gold. Take that. Okay. It's way more gold than I started with. Um. Well, was your first level in bard or barbarian? Barbarian. So barbarian's gold is two d four times ten, and a bard is 5d4 times 10. If you had started with Bard, you would have started with more gold. I think I started our campaign with like 60 gold. Yeah, but uh, the, what I rolled on the Barbarian was 60. And then plus your racial, your racial background is usually like another 10. So 70 gold. Which is a lot in terms of daily living and stuff. As a peasant. Very, very well. Um enough gold to maybe even get you through the whole year. Um, okay. Ooh, I started this new anime. I think you'll like it. What is it? Uh, let me grab it. Is it Twitch appropriate? Yes. Okay. Because I have what you might like and it is not Twitch appropriate. I've also been rewatching a High School DxD. I've, I've been rewatching it too. And I forgot I have the, how different season four animation is. Oh yeah, I have the I have the manga in front of me. No, I have the light novel in front of me. It's on my desk. Um, okay, enter back to entertainer. The power change. Okay, the entertainer routines. Um, I feel like we should just default you to instrumentalist, instrumentalist, because you have an instrument. I don't think you're an actor or a dancer or a fire eater. Or a jester, or a juggler, or a poet, or a singer. You could be a storyteller. I feel like you're a storyteller or instrumentalist. Um, but I feel like I also don't need to write down what your routine is. Because you might just decide what you want it to be. Or any combination of those. Um, as bard. Um, feature. By, by popular demand. You can always find a place to perform. Usually in an inner tavern, but possibly with a circus. At a theater, or even in a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food of the modest and a comfortable standard, depending on the quality of the establishment, as long as you perform each night. In addition, your performance makes you something of a local figure. When strangers recognize you in town where you have performed, they typically take a liking to you. Okay, so you get the feature by popular demand. This is why I think a bard rogue would be helpful. Well, I think that... You can, as the DM, choose to not use the background features because they can be pretty overpowered. The The one for Sailor allows you and your entire party free passage on a ship. And, like, without question. And that could be really overpowered. Or like, uh, like this bard can always get free. It's free lodging for themselves, so not the rest of the party. But in a big enough place, you could fit your whole party in one room and never have to pay for any. Uh, the 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 night you just have to pay for the food, but the bard gets his food for free as long as they perform. But this doesn't say you get paid for the performance, but it would be assumed you would still get tips. So you'd roll. So uh, bards can make money really fucking fast. Um, yeah, yeah, it's okay. too bad we don't stay in very many towns. It depends on the kind of campaign you're playing. You could also be like, all right, cool, week of downtime. I spend every night performing in the inn. Let's roll for them personality traits. D8, that's going to be a 7. I settle for nothing less than perfection. I like it. As an entertainer, yeah. How would you roll for tips, though? Uh, the same way that you roll for your starting gold, the DM might be like, hey, okay, cool. 
this is a very high a stat, uh, high quality in roll me 4d6s times 10 or times 5 right it, it's the dm telling you what to roll and you would roll and multiply and get that much gold um it could be like oh this is a really shitty in you can roll me a d4 times 10 and that is how much gold you were just given in tips right think think of like a street performer performing on the street and people walk by and put a dollar in it that's what it is it's like okay cool you performed for an hour in this inn you just did a, you did a set if you roll a d4 you could make anywhere from 10 gold to 40 gold right it, it makes logical sense Um, but like, uh, and then there's a difference performing on the street, performing in an inn, performing in a high quality and performing in front of the, the court, you probably wouldn't get tips, but the king or the, um, the keeper of the purse might pay you handsome, handsomely to show up or you're performing in exchange for something. Um, so yeah. Okay. Let's roll that ideal. That's going to be a D six. That's going to be a six. Honesty. Art should reflect the soul. It should come from within and reveal who we really are. Damn it. I still didn't get the fucking fly. I see it. You can see it on the screen? Yeah. I can see it fly past you. Bonds, another six. It's going to be a one. My instrument is my most treasured possession, and it reminds me of somebody I love. I'm a sucker for a pretty face. We rolled a stereotypical bard. <laughs> I feel like all bard backgrounds are a stereotypical bard. Um, my I'm so, a cucker. Yeah, I did by accident. <laughs> um, my so I ignore when I roll characters. I tend to like come up with my own for these. Um, my flaw, and this is a personal flaw I have while playing D and D that I have just made every one of my characters have is I will usually usually ignore the simple solution for the more complicated one because uh, there was a time when we were playing a space game, a space campaign, and there was like a weeping angel trap. And we walked into this room and there and there was like 50 something weeping angels in this room, all not moving. And we spent a real life hour of me carefully directing everybody through the room to make sure that everything was always in the vision of at least two people at every moment um as to not trigger a weeping angel and in the center of this room was a pedestal with a big red button on it and i kept insisting no we don't know what it does nobody press the button it's probably going to kill all of us and after an hour tommy like could not take it anymore and just dashed and hit the button take a wild guess at what happened they all died. They, they all crumbled to dust. <laughs> and after that, my, my character's flaw has always been, we'll ignore the obvious solution for an extremely complicated one they came up with. Um, because that is that is something I tend to do. Like, I didn't even think about that being the answer. I was immediately like, that cannot be the answer. That is too easy. Is there a background that benefits a healer class? Um, well, it depends on the heal. If you're like a paladin for a healer and your main stat is, right, charisma, a background that um, adds things to like a medicine check and stuff, nature check, th survival to like find things. Usually if something that'll give you like a medicine check, advantage on medicine is going to be good. Okay. 
Okay. So let's get to the bard stuff now. All right. So bard's hit dice are eight plus your con. So that's going to be eight. And our con is two. So we got a whole whopping ten hit points. Your hit die is a d8. One of those. Um, you're proficient in light armor. Simple weapons. And crossbows. And crossbow. Long sword. Three pierres and a short sword. In terms of tools, short sword, you get three musical instruments of your choice. So in addition to loot, we can have lyre. I think that's how you spell it. We can have flute and we can have bagpipes. Out of nowhere, just add bagpipes. Sure. Oh, it's already. I like how in the book it classifies it as long sword. So should, if long sword is one word, shouldn't short sword be one word? Which subtype for fighter would be the closest to a swashbuckler. I, off the top of my head, I don't know. I'd have to be looking at the list. We'll get there. There is. I'm literally thinking about just building Seacaster. He's not He's not a fighter. Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't I think he's a fighter. He, I, I would see him as a swashbuckler, which uh, to me would fall under a fighter class because there's not like... Well, so like, there is a swashbuckler class. It's a... It's a, um, it's a homebrew. Hold on. I'm pretty sure we've seen Bill Seacaster's character sheet. Um... I think he's a blade dancer. Isn't that a mage, though? Yes. No, it's but... a blade singer. Blade singer. Blade. Yeah, I think he's a blade dancer. Oh, let me see. It's a rogue. A swashbuckler is a rogue subclass. Hold on. I'm pulling up what he is. It's from Seneca's Guide to Get Retained. See, but I don't like that the swashbuckler is a rogue. It's a... Well, it's not a sneaky rogue. It's a subclass. Yeah, but I feel like... Yeah, okay, no, his character sheet isn't on here and doesn't tell you what his what he is, and the things I could say he is would spoil things. You can tell me. No, because you're watching this. I want it to come up as a surprise when you're when you're watching. It Sophomore doesn't here. matter. Everything that character does is amazing. It matters to me that you find out naturally that you get episode two'd naturally. Is it episode two? No, God, no, it's not episode two. It's, like, halfway through. And then it's, like, one of the last, like, five episodes you get something. You get my favorite thing of all time. You get to see the law of the blade. And that will make a lot of sense later on. All right, Bard, we get to pick three skills. Um, I would say typical Bard skills as well, in... Well, we already have we already have acrobatics and performance. So what are the other options? All of them. We can pick any other three. 
Uh, history. Persuasion. Insight? Mm, I don't think insight. I think... Intimidation could be good, because it's another charisma-based thing. Ooh, de deception. Oh, deception. Yeah, deception. Cause I if just you're... didn't want him to be basically my, my bard. <laughs> well, hey, if you're a bard and you jump up on the stage and you're telling a story, but you're lying the whole time, I'm not making you make a performance check. You're making a deception check to lie to a whole room of people with the story you're telling. If you're telling the story about the time you and the party killed the dragon together and you just met yesterday, you're rolling deception. <laughs> All right. Do we want to give them a rapier, a longsword, or a simple melee weapon? I think a rapier. Rapier. Rapier would be fun. My favorite, my favorite bard of all time, Spoonie the Bard, has a rapier, and he only ever uses it once in the entire campaign, and he uses it at the end of it to cut up a pillow and shake out the feathers. Get a rapier. Do we give them a diplomat pack or an entertainer's pack? Uh, let's go with the entertainer's pack. We're going to lean heavily into the entertainer part. Uh, we can give them a lute, which they already have, or any other musical instrument. I recommend we give them a flute, because that is the other thing they are proficient in, and it's small. Um, How about they also get the hands. No. That's This is equipment. <laughs> you already have your hands. You're just not proficient in your hands. But proficient in clapping. No. It's funny, but no. <laughs> okay, so they have a rapier. And if I had an back. office again, I would clap my hands when we play Roll20 every time I had to do something with my bard stuff. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so... Uh, spell slots. Fucking spell slots. Okay, so... You have the, you have the feature spellcasting, because you can cast spells. Yada, 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 yada. Um, okay, your spellcasting ability is... Charisma. Um, your spell save DC is 8 plus your proficiency components plus your charisma. So that's 8 plus 2, that's 10, and your charisma by 3, so you have a save of 13. 13. Your spell attack bonus is plus, I think it's just plus 5 again. Your spell attack modifier, your proficiency bonus, plus your charisma modifier. Yeah, so it's plus five. Spell save DC is 13. Um, okay. Uh, you get ritual casting, yada, yada, yada. Okay, spellcaster. Ritual casting, you get bardic inspiration. Which is a d6. And then, okay, so that's it for there. Okay, so two cantrips, and you know four, four spells. Um. Bard's prepared spell list is based on 
Da da da. Spells known for them. You know, four first level spells are tracking them. When spells known, each spell must be over instances of when you gain levels from the charisma. Uh, your musical instrument. Okay, so then I don't think that matters. Okay, so you get two cantrips, four spells, and you have two first level spots. Let's. Ah, oh, damn it! Missed the fucking fly again. Sitting on the wall. God fucking damn it. Um, okay, so you have two slots. Didn't I just write in the bottom what these were and now they're gone? Oh, because I'm back on the half work. How did I get back on the half work? What trait? Why did I give him these? You don't get these. You don't get these. We're just gonna close. We're done. We're done with you. So you can close. They only bard only gets one bardic inspiration at level one. I thought they got two minimum. Um. Uh, it's equal to your charisma modifier with a minimum of one, so they have three. Yeah, they can hand out three per long rest right now. Charisma modifier plus one? Minimum of one. So if you had a charisma of ten and you had a zero modifier, you would still get one. You get think... a minimum of one, but it is equal to your charisma modifier. What is my... Two. Oh, so my charisma modifier is two. I believe you can give it off as a bonus action. Yeah, it's a bonus action. Okay, so we get two, six, four... Done with that, so I'm gonna set this aside for a second because I know we eat two and we get four, and I can pull my keyboard forward so I can type. So let's pull up the bard list. Uh, <coughs> bard spells? Yeah. For cantrips, we have Blade Ward, Dancing Lights. Friends, light, mage hand, mending, message, minor illusion, pressed digitation, thunderclap, true strike, and vicious mockery. So they have to have vicious mockery because this is a bard. Right? Yeah. Have to. Um, have to, have to, have to. Um, I could see friends, light, and message, and prestidigitation being good. Minor illusion could also be good. I feel like as a bard, if you're performing and you can do magic and you can cast minor illusion, which does sound or an image. Um, juggling lights. Well, you can only do one thing, one image, one object. You have an object, a chair, muddy footprints, or a small chest. I believe if a bard was telling a story, it could constantly be casting minor illusion to help tell the story, right? Muddy footprint on the ground. Cast it again. It disappears. They reappear two feet in front of it in a different position. You're, you're telling the story with minor illusion. Yeah, I think of minor illusion, and I think of playing the cup game, like the ball in the cup. Yeah. Where, like, you're, you're shuffling the cups around, right? Yeah. And, and the ball is just minor illusion. So every time they pick up the cup, they lose. Oh yeah, one hundred fucking percent. You've minor illusion the ball. You lift the cup. You put. You, you show where that is. You put it down. You dismiss the spell, and then you shuffle it around. There's nothing fucking in it. And then when you lift to show it, you recast it. That's under that one. Or you have. That's fucking genius. <laughs> or uh, you could do it where it's it's three cups with three balls. Right? Yeah. And all three of them are white. 
but you minor illusion one to be red. And then you put that one in and you'd be like, okay, you gotta find, if you find the red one, I pay you. If you find a white one, I win. But what happens if they pick that cup and they pick it up and there's no ball under it? You have to have you have something under it. No, no, no. Can't, can't you use like minor illusion to just like change through illusion what something looks like? No, because you're creating an object out of nothing. You're not laying the image over it. You're making something not there. You're not changing something that is there. I think changing something that in there is prestidigitation. Because prestidigitation is a transmutation spell. Um, Would a mountain of gold coins count as that? Or a pile of gold coins? For a minor illusion, I'd say you could probably make a handful of coins. Okay, do we take minor illusion or do we take prestidigitation? Minor illusion. Minor illusion. Just because of the, the sorting. I feel like that'd be better on a rogue, though, then. I'm telling you, dude, a bard rogue multiclass sounds great. And okay. I've got to build one. And we get four first level spells. So, um, I'm like an unseen servant. Sleep. Cure wounds. Charm person or disguise self? I thought we were going to take friends. Friends is a cantrip. Uh, for first level spell? Mm hmm. I like sleep, I like cure wound. Unseen Servant, I could see being being handy, but we could ditch it. So we could take Charm Person and Disguise Self. Yeah, do both of those. Okay, I'll ditch Unseen Servant for Charm Person and Disguise Self. Sleep. Cure wound. Damn it, I had these like in almost alphabetical order. And then they went. I'm thinking of building a swashbuckler rogue with one level into the domain of life cleric. Just so I can run around in a pirate voice and be like, I was, uh, uh, I'd be a holy, holy man in another life. And it's just like cast heal and go back to like cutting people up with the, uh, uh I'm blanking on the name of like the curved pirate blades. A um, a swashbuckler's blade. Yeah, but they they have like a name though. So I ha I have a kind of curved sword. It's a cavalry sword though. That's the curved one. Uh, hold on. I have a legit. Oh, it's a like... cutlass. I have it's a cutlass. Yes. Yeah, I have I have a I have a, um a cold steel cutlass. It's this I have nice like, a... like heavy metal one. In your big campaign, mm -hmm. is there any cult involved in the story? Technically? I have a cultist dagger. It's big, and it's heavy. Yeah. But it's like a sacrificial dagger. Yeah, I have one too. I, it's not, I don't have a big heavy one, but I have one on my shelf behind me. It's a ritual dagger that I bought. It's very handle heavy. Mm hmm. Could be a good uh, table prop. Uh, 
Okay, so we have leather armor. 11 armor is, leather armor is 11 plus dex mod. So that's 11 and your dex is zero. So you have an armor class 11. Do you reroll damage rolls that roll on one when you have lucky trait? Yes, it, it is. Okay. Well, hold on, let me go back to lucky. I think, it, I don't think it's the damage. It's the attack, saving throw, and ability throws. <laughs> that you get. <laughs> oh. Attack, roll, ability check, saving throw. So not your damage die, but everything else. Okay, and then your perception is your wisdom and your performance is there. So we have a passive of 11. And then we need damage. I surprisingly have quite a few friends that are into playing D&D that I did not know were into D&D. Like a lot, a lot. Uh, like more than I thought. Uh, Adam is also into D and D. I was showing him episode one of Fantasy Heights today. Ah, is he going to he watch was like, it? Probably. He's like, this is this is pretty great. I'm like, they just put all of season one on YouTube. Just go watch it. But it's censored though. But it's a good way to watch it because I don't like handing out my password. Yeah. That's fine. I had it up on my That's iPad fine. just sitting between us today while working. It was yeah. kind of cruddy because it was like I had I had to pause it like every time a customer walked in. Um, finesse means you can make the attack with your strength or your dex modifier. Um both of which are zero, so it doesn't matter. So you get that plus your proficiency. You're proficient in rapiers and simple weapons. Simple weapon includes dagger, so you get your proficiency bonus of plus two. And then daggers are a D4. One D four Pierce. Is that is that how you spell Pierce? Yeah, it is. Um, and then, okay, there's that. Daggers, rough it, finesse. All right, I think that does it for everything on the bar. Yeah, everything there looks all good. The Elvar Lightfoot Halfling Entertainer Bar. Well, oh, save as. And if you're going to go into Dreamers, and you are going to be. Level one, light foot, half, halfling, bard, entertainer. X 
this one. Put a tile, put up a new one. Pack up the new sheet. And we're good. After Bard. See, it's taking us about an hour per character. Yeah. Well, tomorrow, I'm going to be at Encino all day. But once I get home no, and get to again. the overnight job, since I don't have to do anything, I don't have to come into work on Saturday, mm -hmm. I can just be up all about the overnight job and we can do this too. Alright, cool. Because I, that's that's going to start at 12. I'm probably going to get up around 11 to go do that stuff. Uh, maybe 10, because I think I'm going to go to the grocery store before I go do that. So I thought you would be there at 9. In the morning? No. I'd be there at 12. Or the party starts at 12. Oh, the party. I Sorry, I was talking about overnight. No, so Friday nights are... I start at 11. Sunday nights, because uh, they didn't have somebody there from 9 to 11, I was coming in at 9. Mm -hmm. But we have a new guy, so I'm probably going to start texting him and being like, hey, if he wants to stay until 11, I'll come in at 11. Okay, so you're covering somebody on Sunday? Uh, I've been covering for a while. We just Got didn't it. have somebody who was going to stay until like the full end of the, that shift. Got it, okay. But now there's somebody new there. And... Um, I will probably just tell I'll probably tell him on Sunday when I come in and be like, if you want to come, start staying until 11, um, that's fine. Because then I don't have to come as early. Oh, that's... All right, so we got the cleric. Oh, what race? What domain? <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, we got to um, pick that level one, don't we? What race indeed? Dragonborn? Dragonborn for Paladin. I feel like Dragonborn for Paladin or Cleric would be fun. Or both. Yeah. I mean, my my Paladins uh, are normally... Frank was originally a, a Dragonborn. The first time I played... Sorry, the second time I played Frank, Frank was a Dragonborn. He was a Black Dragonborn. He was a Black Dragon. Um, and then Frank was also a female human named Frankie at one point and is also an Asimar. Uh, I like Dragonborn Paladin. I feel like Gnome Cleric could be funny. Gnome Cleric, Dwarf Cleric, Tiefling Cleric? Nah. I feel like Dwarf could be good. Dwarf, I like Dwarf Cleric. Yeah, let's go with Dwarf. Knight Clerics are... Wisdom based. Knight Clerics are Wisdom based. Dwarves get a bonus to that. Okay, so let's go with dwarves. Okay. So, fifteen wisdom, because that is our modifier. Sixteen, sorry, fourteen con. Give us high health. Thirteen. What you thinking here? What do you want to dump in? What do you want to dump the aid in? Uh, Get that out of the way. 
probably dump decks. Dump decks. We can. That'll give us a minus one in initiative, though. We could dump strength. Yeah. No, but then any attack actually has a. Want to dump one. intel then? Yeah, we could dump intelligence. Well, religion also requires intelligence. Oh, we could dump charisma. You're a cleric. You're not supposed to be charismatic. You're supposed to be all religious and stuff. Let's dump charisma. <laughs> all right, I guess dump charisma. Doesn't isn't a lot of it the spells based off of your charisma though? No, that's for paladins. Clerics are wisdom based. Ah, uh, <clears throat> okay. So then, yeah, let's just dump charisma. Okay, and just, then just gonna be Drax from Guardians. Thirteen strength. 12 dex, 10 intelligence, or 10 dex, 12 intelligence? Uh, 10 dex. 12 intelligence, okay. Um, dwarf traits, our constitution is raised by 2, so that bumps us to 16. Um, we'll go through the rest of the stuff, and then we'll pick our sub. Sub dwarf. So, uh, age, alignment, don't care, size is medium, uh, their speed is going to be 25, uh, they have dark vision, uh, you have dwarven resilience, You are resistant to poison against resistant to poison damage. And you have advantage on saving throws against poison. You can never spell poison, right? Um, okay, um, combat training, that's going to give you battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, Warhammer, uh, tool proficiency. Uh, do we want to be proficient in smith's tools, brewer's supplies, or mason's tools? Brewer. Brewer is beer, isn't it? Or is it potions as well? Brewer's is brewing things. Um, potions is normally an alchemist kit, so brewer would probably be drinks. But this is a cleric. But it's a dwarf. And dwarves like drinking. Drinking is a but dwarven a, trait. Clerics can drink. Yeah. Um, I feel like mace... Uh, we could go brewer's supplies. Wait, was masonry an option? Mason's tools, yeah. Because they have stone cutting. Yes. Do mason. Yes, oh, okay. That's what I was leaning we'll Build to. a castle. I'm just going to leave it as stone cunning um, and not type that whole thing out because it's whenever you make a history check related to the origin of stonework, you may be considered proficient in the history check and add double your proficiency bonus uh, instead of your normal, and I'm not going to try typing that all out in a short thing that makes sense. I love that out of all the races that get natural armor, everybody else's base AC is 12. 
And then the turtles is just, hey, it's it's 17. That you're talking about the dwarf for sounds like dwarves don't have natural armor. No, I was looking at the other races that are offered it, and they all start at like 12 plus like one modifier. Yeah. And the turtle is just, it's 17. No right. modifier. Do we want to be a hill dwarf or a mountain dwarf? Uh... Hill dwarf uh, gives us a wisdom increase by one and dwarven toughness. So your hit point maximum is increased by one and increases by one every time you gain a level. And mountain is a strength score increase of two and you're proficient with light and medium armor. Hill Dwarf would bump our Wisdom to 16, though. So I think Hill Dwarf. Yeah, I like Hill Dwarf. I also like it because the Dwarven Toughness. So that makes our Wisdom 16. Did we roll for hit points on the other ones? Uh, Well, you're level 1, so you automatically get max plus... Uh, con. You don't roll for hit points at level 1. You are assigned them. Um, okay, and you get Dwarven Toughness. I wonder how a changeling bard would be. So if I read this correctly, Dwarven Toughness is your hit point maximum increases by one. So if your hit points, once you have them, at level one, is say is 12, it automatically becomes a 13. So then when you level up to 14, it would then go up by two, because it would increase by one every time you gain a level. Right? Um... The way I read it is your maximum is increased by one and increases by one every time you gain a level. So by that, I think you would just add one every time you level up, plus whatever you're rolling for your health. That also makes sense to me. I'm Googling it to also to be sure. Because otherwise I can see a level 20 character just having an immediate, like, extra 40 health. Yeah, that's what someone is. It's like, it's, uh, no, it's one plus one HP every time you level up. Yeah, it's not a cascading effect. It's just a, a constant extra one health. A dwarf at level 20 would have gained 20 extra hit points over the course of his entire career. Yeah, yeah. according to, to the that, yeah. the way I read it. The way you read it, it would have probably been like 40 or something. Oh yeah, it would have, it would have been way high. It would have been way higher than 42, I think. By one of every level. By one... Okay, so that does it there. Um, let's assign those. So 13, that's going to be a plus 2. Dex is going to be plus 0. Con is going to be plus 3. Intelligence is going to be plus 1. Wisdom is going to be plus 3. And a charisma is going to be minus 1. The only thing that has strength is Aesthetics, dex is zero, zero, zero plus zero, dex plus nothing. Nothing has constitution. Hey, we remembered. So it would be beauty plus one for intelligence. Wisdom. 
this one is possible. one groovy all right background i feel acolyte because you're a cleric um yeah i think acolyte would work the best for cleric feel like you could go knight could go noble Ooh, i wouldn't go sage could be a soldier again I think Soldier, Acolyte. I think Soldier would be better for Paladin. Paladin. I've Paladin Knight, though. I think Knight would be good for Paladin. Yeah. Or G Guild Artisan could be good for Paladin, too. I don't know. Do we want to go with Noble, Knight, Acolyte? What you thinking? Uh, acolyte. Acolyte. Okay. We could do acolyte or knight, and then we could do noble for paladin too. Uh, well, knight, noble, knight is a subclass of noble. Of noble. Okay, so then let's do acolyte for cleric, and okay. then the noble knight for the paladin. Because what it, noble gives you the three pages but knight gives you the ability to like gain audience with the king because you are a knight well okay so acolytes get insight and religion insight and religion uh two languages of your choice Hold on, I forgot to write down dwarf languages. How did I forget that? Common and Dwarfish, okay. Alright, uh, what two languages do we want? Um, the options are Elvish, Giant, Gnomish, Goblin, Halfling, Orc, and then the exotic languages of Abyssal, Celestial, Deep Speech, Draconic, Infernal, Primordial, Sylvan, and Undercommon. What are you feeling like? Uh, whatever languages we may run into in this one shot. I feel like handing... When there's language choices, like stuff or act, something in there that we might actually have to use. Language does not play a big part in this. Okay. And if it did, I wouldn't tell you. Well, I know you wouldn't tell me. So pick pick two languages that you want. Elvish and Draconic. I feel like those are two very common languages that come up. Okay, and then equipment, we get a holy symbol, a prayer book, five sticks of Zimbus, vestments, a set of common clothes, and a patch containing five gold. Okay, so that's going to be prayer book
Oh, Peter. So let's bounce over and roll for gold. Clerics get a whopping. So this is the 5d4. All right, keep track of how many things I've rolled. 5d4, that's going to be a 3. That makes 4 total. 6. 10. One more. Let's just call it one more. 3. 13. 13 times 10, that's 130 gold, so they have 145 gold total. Damn. Uh, they get the feature, the Shelter of the Faithful. As an acolyte, you command the respect of those who share your faith. You can perform the religious ceremonies of your deity. You and your adventuring companions can expect to receive free healing and care at a temple, shrine, or other established presence of your faith, though you must provide any material components needed for the spells. Those who share your religion will support you, but only you at a mod style style. Uh, you might also have ties to a specific temple dedicated to your chosen deity or pantheon, and you have a residence there. This could be a temple where you used to serve if you remain on good terms with it, or a temple where you have found a new home. While near your temple, you can call upon the priestess for assistance. Uh, providing the assistance you ask for is not hazardous, and you remain in a good standing with your temple. That's going to be feature. Shelter of the Faithful. All right, let's roll some personality. Let's roll that d8 going to be a whopping five. I quote or misquote sacred texts and proverbs in almost every situation. Uh, did you ever see the movie Maverick? Uh, it's a it's about poker. It's like a Wild West poker movie. No, it's I really like it. And this whole time, the main character is spitting off these quotes. And at the end of the movie, he uh, he's with his dad, and he says a quote, and he's like, "No, that's not what it was." What do you mean that's not what it was? This was the quote. And he's like, "No, you've been misquoting me your entire life." And uh, that's, yeah, I always find that really funny. All right, let's go with ideals. I like the Ricky Bobby one when they do that. It's like, idea. if you're not first, you're last. He was like, no, you're just not first. <laughs> All right, we rolled a five. Faith. I must trust that my deity will guide my actions. I have faith that if I work hard, things will go well. That's going to be a six. I seek to preserve a sacred text that my enemies consider heretical and seek to destroy.
flies. Another six. Once I pick a goal, I become obsessed with it to the to the detriment of everything else in my life. <laughs> That's funny. My church, it's so important to me. But I decided I wanted to become an adventurer. Okay. That covers that. So let's go to Cleric. Clerics are 1d8, so it's 8 plus con. So 8 plus our con, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's going to be 11, which is going to go to 12. Put on that. We have a d8. So it's 1. I feel like this is actually supposed to be the other way around. Now that I'm realizing that now, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be d8 and your total hit dice you have is one no well that says total so yeah your total would be one and your hit dice is 1d8 not zd8 1d8 okay did the same thing there too one okay you're proficient in light medium and shields Simple weapons. Uh, I see it because of wisdom and charisma. Charisma. Skills, we may choose two. History, insight, medicine, persuasion, religion. And we already have religion, so we could have history, insight, medicine, persuasion. I feel like medicine is good. And then I feel like history as the other. Because then we just get the bonus, the proficiency bonus to everything on history and on stone it's doubled. Or I could see insight being also good. Um, oh, we're already proficient in insight. Uh, religion, um, insight, and history would be good. Medicine and persuasion? Or medicine, history? What do you think? Medicine and history are fine. I thought oh, persuasion would also be funny, just because then you're just trying to convert people as you go. Well, sorry, what did you say? I missed what you said. I said medicine and history would be probably best, but okay. persuasion would be funny because you just try to convert people as you go across. And you have a minus one in persuasion. <laughs> I say let's go medicine history. Yeah. Uh, did we pick what domain already? No, not yet. I still gotta put in the equipment first. And then we pick that. Uh, do we want a mace or do we want a warhammer? Because we are proficient in warhammers. say mace because cleric but warhammer because dwarf i say mace because then you have your other hand for spells okay um and this character in my terms of dming might have the strength high well the warhammer is also uh versatile so it can be 
one handed or two handed. Yeah, it's just if you're gonna attack with one hand or two. Yeah. We're proficient in it. Let's take Warhammer. It's more damage. All right. Um, okay. Uh, then we can have scale mail, leather armor, or chain mail if we're proficient. We are not proficient in chain mail. So we can have scale mail or leather armor. Um, if we go look at the differences. Scale mail is 14 plus dex, but you have disadvantage on stealth. Or we take a leather, a leather and we have 11 plus dex. Um, and our dex is zero. So we can have 11 or 14, but if we take the 14, we have disadvantage on stealth. I say let's just take the scale. For the scale mail? Yeah. Yeah. The leather armor doesn't sound like something a dwarf would wear. Um, okay, I will. We'll just remember. Not that we will, but we'll just remember they have disadvantage on still. Did I say I said that was 14? I keep looking at my screen like I'm going to have uh, the delay to the book, but the book's in real life. And not on my screen. Fourteen plus dex, so we have no dex, so we are on the cost of fourteen. We have a initiative of zero. Um, our perception, which we don't have that in, so we have a perception of preciseness based on a wisdom. So we actually have a thirteen. Okay. Um. Okay, do we want a light crossbow and 20 bolts or a simple weapon? I feel like simple a simple weapon. weapon. What simple weapon would you like? Oh, we can have the mace. We can have both. Yeah, let's just take the mace. <laughs> Okay, and then we can have a priest's pack or an explorer's pack. Priest's pack. Okay, and then we also get a shield and a holy symbol. Now, technically, so Frank technically breaks a rule within D&D that Garrett hasn't called me on or forced me to upkeep, which is wearing the shield on your back doesn't count as wearing the shield or using the shield for the shield bonus. Mm -hmm. So Frank's AC should actually be lower. The Warhammer can be used one-handed, and so can the Mace. So we could use the shield and raise that AC to 16, or we can, I will leave it unequipped and we will just have to remember to give them the option to use the shield. Um, so how I have my turtle right now is he has the slightly magical morning star in one hand mm -hmm. and it's the shield in the other at all times. Yeah. And if you wanted to use your claws and like double tap, you could just tap twice with the same hand. You, if you get, if you get multi attack, you can multi attack with the same hand. Yes. Okay. So we get spell casting and ritual. So it's eight plus proficiency plus wisdom. 
So that's 8 plus 2. So the proficiency bonus is plus 2 level, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if I can get Garrett to let me, the next time we get to a town with a blacksmith, uh, dip my claws in, like, molten steel. You wouldn't be able to put your claws back in? I don't think they ever come out. Oh, that would probably hurt you a lot, though. Yeah, but I mean, if I don't die instantly from it, I now have more damage. Not, no, that, that you'd have to sharpen them. Well, and then okay. you'd have to try not to cut everything you touch. Yeah, but then it'd just be funnier character shit. Just, like, don't cut stuff when I go, like, shake somebody's hand and I cut off their hand. Uh, you, it's like the the first day being a pirate when you get your hook and you go to scratch your head. Or, uh, when Vecta the Shuriken stuck to his hand, it's like that, but always. <laughs> yeah, okay, that'd be funny. So I, I have to make a high or a low roll with a, a, a d20 every time I, uh, I interact with somebody with my hands. Disadvantage on all persuasion rolls of trying to be friendly. Because disadvantage on all sleight of hand. On sleight of hand. Disadvantage on any persuasion roll pertaining to trying to be friendly because you look very scary, but advantage on all intimidation rolls because now you look really scary. I get a minus one and a plus one. All right, divine domain. Knowledge, life, light, nature, tempest, trickery, or war. I feel like we should just roll a die. <laughs> one, uh, how many options are there? Seven. Where's my phone? Do you have a... Okay, hey, so... Hey, Siri, pick a number between one and seven. Pick four. Pick four. I was going to say roll a, a D8, and if it lands on a 1, we roll again. No, nah, I'd pick a number between 1 and 7 is good. Not 1, 2, so that's nature. The nature clerics are basically just shitty druids. You just want to pick a life, then, and be a standard cleric? I guess. Okay. I really like the Domain of Life cleric. Which is weird, because I don't... I don't typically play, like, support healer classes. In anything. Life cleric. Okay. Okay, so we don't get Channel Divinity yet. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so. I need life. There's life, okay. So we get Bless and Cure Wounds. When you choose this domain at first level, you gain proficiency within heavy armor. So we now have proficiency in all armor. Now we're going to have chain. Now we can have that chain now. Does our AC allow us to chain mail, though? Uh, your AC doesn't uh, have to allow you chain mail. Oh, it's chainmail if proficient. We're proficient in chainmail. Um, so I will just change that to changemail. We still have disadvantage on stealth, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, chainmail. Oh, chainmail requires a strength of 13, and we have a strength of 13. 
so we're good. Chainmail does, oh no, Chainmail still deals with disadvantage. Straight 13, but that goes to 16. So we could get up to 18 by using the shield. Okay, so we're back here. Starting at first level, your healing spells are more effective. When you use a spell of first level or higher, restore hit points to a creature. The creature regains additional hit points equals to two plus spell level. Okay, and I think that fin yeah, that finishes off Disciple of Life. Uh, we gotta pick spells. All right, we get three cantrips. Uh, I'm going to say mending. That's a good one to have as a cleric. You fix things. Um, guidance, because that allows you to help people. Um, That's not from players. Thaumaturgy or Toll of the Dead? I was thinking Spare the Dying. Because you can touch a living creature that has zero hit points and it just instantly stabilizes it. Okay. Uh, I like also... how that's a necromancy spell. You're Because you're sparing the dying. So... I guess that's a, like, very useful cantrip. Yeah. Guidance. Spare the dying. And mending. So, uh, remember when we were talking about the, the custom feat uh, for all for one? For mm -hmm. all out attack? So I remember how I was like, oh, and you have the chance to, like, break your weapon? Mending yeah. could fix it. It takes True. one minute, but you could, as long as the break or tear is no larger than one foot, you could mend the sword back together. I would say it, it, it would be enough to put it back together to last through a couple more fights, but to make it fixed, you would need to take it to a blacksmith. Yeah. But it would it, it would be able to get you out of the shitter. Okay. And then we get two first level spells. Um
we already have Cure Wounds and Bless through our thing. So I'm thinking Healing Word. And... How many level 1 spells do we take? We get two. 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 But we already have Bless and Cure Wounds from our Divine Domain. Uh, do we want to go with Sanctuary? Your sanctuary? You ward a creature with an range against attack until the spell ends. Any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or a harmful spell must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. The spell doesn't protect the warded creature from area effects such as explosion or fireball, but it's a, it's a bonus action. Uh, it lasts one minute, and it's not concentration. So, you can pretty much kind of, like, as a bonus action, make it so somebody is harder to hit. And then we take healing words, so we have another healing thing. Um, uh, cure wounds? Oh, we already have cure wounds. So we have we have cure wounds and, and healing word. We have cure we have cure wounds and bless from our divine domain. Um, I'm okay. saying we take uh, healing word as an option because healing word is a bonus action, but cure wounds is an action. Okay, I definitely want to have both curing wounds and and healing word. Yeah. So every, anything else. Besides those, you can just pick. So then let's take Sanctuary, because it's a useful thing to me. Um, okay. Um, and then I think that wraps everything up. I just have to assign the damages for the Mace and the Warhammer. And then I think we're all good. Oh, hey, somebody's talking in the chat that I just noticed. Hey, Just Logics. Sorry, I had, um, I had the spell screen up, so I didn't see... Uh, chat, hi, how you doing? Welcome to the nerding. I thought you were watching the stream. Are you not watching chat? I'm not watching your chat. I'm watching the stream. But I'm also watching DIY YouTube videos at the same time. And oh. looking through a bunch of character stat stuff. Got it. Okay. Okay. I need more monitors. Yeah, two monitors isn't really enough sometimes. Oh, I think they left the stream. Why they did. Would... They didn't? They did. Okay. There's only two viewers on one of them. Well, we've been bouncing between like two and four. I don't know. Hold on. Let's take a look here. I will, if somebody joins my stream, I will like stock them. Why is Twitch white? My Twitch should have the black background because the white is just so hideous and bright. It doesn't look like they're a streamer. There is a uh, Chrome extension called Night Eye that puts dark mode on everything. Uh, I have a thing that inverses the colors of everything. I'll be like on a website and it'll be like really pale, right? Uh, like gray, uh, gray. It'll be like black on white writing and I hate it mm -hmm. and I have a, a thing that will just switch it but it makes it like so hideous to look at on some pages because it just flips it. Guess what a customer found in our lobby at Northridge today. Huh. A dead cockroach. Really? And then Caitlin started freaking out about it. That's kind of funny. She's like, I'm worried there's more. I'm like, oh, if there's one, there's probably more. And then Adam's like, where there's one, there's a hundred. Maybe you shouldn't have brought in that PlayStation filled with bugs. I sent the person a message. I was like, hey, sorry, we missed your message. I had a spell screen up. Uh, I don't want people to think I'm ignoring them when I put something up. I need a third screen. I don't have fucking space in this corner to shove in a third screen. Unless, uh, like, I could mount it on the wall behind it and be in the middle, but it would be there. Weird. So that old cruddy screen at Northridge from the old Samsung computer yeah. still works. It's just on the ground at Northridge. That it's BGA or DVI. 
and it has a USB hub on it. It has a four port USB hub attached to it. That that's nice. Garbage. You can probably get it if you ask Caitlin for it and I'll bring it back to you. No, I don't have the I have no good way to mount this to the to the wall that's here. This wall uh, is like uh, a closet wall. In a Damn. month I'm probably gonna be redoing my desk and I will be purchasing monitor arms. And as a one-handed Warhammer, it's 1d8. Why is Warhammer called Warhammer? So, okay, so there's there's two kinds of Warhammers. Um, the well, Warhammer... the game. Huh? You meant the game. No, no, no. No, so within the game, a Warhammer is really more of a war pick. So it's, it's a long shaft, and then there's like a hammer on one side and like a pick on the other. That is a Warhammer. Yeah, that's, um, the, that's what my turtle has. Yeah. To me, that is not a Warhammer. A Warhammer, it, picture Thor's hammer. But it's giant. But bigger. But it, it's a longer yeah. handle, and the, end is, and the end is just a bigger rectangle. That is a Warhammer. It's a big yeah. bash weapon. Because technically, the Warhammer within D&D, because it has a pick on the end, you should be able to flip it around and do piercing damage. But you can't. Well, that would be a war pick, isn't it? No, so, yes and no. Okay, hold on. I'm pretty sure there's a weapon in D&D. &D there there is. Pick. There's a war pick. But when you pull up, like, a picture of a war of a lot of war hammers, you get the thing that's a war pick, but then it has the thing on the top that's, like, another stab. It, it is, like, a big discrepancy between things. To me, a war hammer is a really big hammer, a really big sludge hammer, and a war pick has the pick on the end. Uh, the war pick itself ends up being something that doesn't have, like, the tag on the top is what I usually end up seeing is, like, the discrepancy between them. Mm -hmm. Wish tiles of D10. Two hand. Oh, so it's a plus four, but it's a D ten. Ten. Blood. Instead of writing, oh, they're like right damage and type, but there's not enough room to write it all out, and that that always bugs me. Um. Warhammer miss. The fan is on here, and this room is getting so hot. Okay, I think that finishes off. I didn't write in the background name. We picked Acolyte. Background Acolyte. I'm just gonna copy that. Background Acolyte. Hell Dwarf. Good, good. Good, good. Got those. Yeah, okay. Hell Dwarf comes. We got a life. Fire Hell Dwarf. Human character. Level one. Is everybody gonna get an inspiration die on this game? Yeah, everybody can start with an inspiration die. All right, I say we make one more and then we wrap. All right. Because building four class? characters back to back is a lot. Um, hold on, I gotta open up new sheet, new sheet, close. Gonna make a tweet real quick, but up next in terms of Classes after cleric is druid. So we will.
now be making bees. Ooh, part of me is like, let's not make this level one. Let's build my bees character. But then I'm like, no, we need to make the level one so we have a level one druid. Uh, I told Adam about that today. About bees? The Dr. Bees and my raptor druid. And he was like, god dang it. It's Dr. Bees. And I told him about you picking it as a fairy. So you could have a bee mount. And he was like... Oh, well, hold on, hold on. It's it, like, I need this. I need the... The bee mount is homebrewed. Because I need the DM to give me uh, summon steed as a druid. But no, it's it, the big thing is the fairy that's like, You fucked with the wrong person, buddy. <laughs> I need to I have voice mod I need I need to find like a high pitched ooh voice to do <laughs> to do for the fairy and uh do it on like roll 20 or something that would be that'd be funny you should uh, be the fairy but then have uh disguise self or something something where you can change your appearance and then turn into the bee from bee movie and all of a sudden, he he spins, changes. Uh, she becomes a he. He's a bee, and he goes, "You like jazz?" <laughs> That's the druid like, bard. That's the druid bard. Yes, and then you just start playing the flute, and you just play jazz on the flute. Unless you want to homebrew the flute into a um, trumpet or a tuba. Part of me wants to get up and stretch, and the other part of me is like, let's just power through one more character. Power through the druid. Urgh, okay, what... What race is our druid? Druids need wisdom. Actually, hold on. We are going to take a break for a second, because I'm going to refill my water bottle. Or my water. I will pee and get a drink as well. Uh, we'll be right back, stream. We're going to switch to BRB. We'll be back in like two, three minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. So Ooh. I was thinking, um, all bard campaign, but uh, you're a druid bard, and for wild shape instead, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you if you can wild shape into anything, but instead of wild shaping into swarm of insects and it's just a whole bunch of bees, you wild shape into one really really big bee. <laughs> You could be the queen bee. <laughs> the queen bee. Uh, do, oh, do you know what? Huh. Be a changeling. I don't think changelings can turn into bees, though. Changelings, I think, can only do humanoids. Do a wasp person. A wasp person's not a thing. Alright, what, what, what race do we want to do for the druid? Uh, uh, half elf? Does half elf grant wisdom? No. Um. Nothing really grants wisdom. Nothing that is like the regular I'm looking at does. There's like subclasses that might do one or two wisdom. We could do human. Yeah, we could do human. Because they get the plus one to everything. They do. So we just take our high stat and throw it into wisdom. We could do the dragonborn druid. If you were a dragonborn druid and you wild shaped, could you still use your breath weapon? Uh, if it's a, an ability, I would believe so, because it would work the same thing as a barbarian druid that wild shapes. Well, but it's... The barbarian, but you're raging before you go into it, right? And it maintains. But the dragonborn ability of your breath weapon is because you're part dragon that you can fire or acid or lightning yeah, but or whatever. When you, you're wild shaping, you're taking on the physical and attributes of the thing you're changing into. But you are still a dragonborn. Yeah, but... But if you're if you're taking on the physical attributes, right? You're 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 turning into a lion, right? If you were to somehow get cut in half before you popped back, because I know you pop back at zero, you pop back to whatever hit points you had. Um, sorry, sorry, correction. So if you got turned into a what what what's the animal that has different colored blood? Don't crabs bleed blue? I think so. So if you turned into a giant crab and got cut and you're bleeding would it be red or blue it should if you if you were a dragonborn it should bleed red because dragon's blood is red but you're a crab so it should be blue so can you use this breath it weapon it would be purple it would be purple but the, the question is is though this weapon isn't like magic that you cast or like a roar that's like a boost this is an ability because your insides are dragon insides if you turn into a crab, are you a crab with dragon insides? Or are you a crab with crab insides? But mentally, you're a dragon. That. These are the questions I need answers to. Can I Google this? I need to I'm know doing if I can. that right now. <laughs> I, need to, I need to know this answer now. No. You retain the benefit of any features from your class, race, or other sources and can use them if the new form is physically capable of doing so. So okay. Dragon's Born Breath Weapon is a unique function of the Dragon Born's physical anatomy since the Breath Weapon is not magical. Okay, so you can't use it unless you're, you're yourself. Yeah. Because it'd be really cool if a crab could suddenly <laughs> breathe lightning. <laughs> But is there a wild shape that lets you turn into a dragonoid? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's one of the options, because I'm pretty sure wild shape lists everything you can turn into. If a changeling changed into a dragonborn, would they get a breath attack? No, I don't think so. Because you're not... Changelings just change to look like one. I don't think they become one. I don't think they take on the attributes of what they change into. But I think if I made a, a rogue bard, it would be a changeling. 
I have this character I want to make. So I, I've got the character that, that I want to make that's like my, my rogue that's Crumbopulous Michael. Mm -hmm. And it's just, oh boy, here I go killing again. And um, and I could probably incorporate this into the same character. If He's a changeling, so he always has the ultimate disguise. And so he can walk up to anybody and go, hi, yes, I'm Crumbopulous Michael, the, the assassin. And gets in trouble and he just changes what he looks like but what part of like his backstory his flaw is that i think he changes so much he doesn't know who he is anymore he just knows he's crumbopulous michael the famous assassin and that's what he does but and he's always all about the job that it's like he doesn't have any like likes or dislikes or hobbies it's oh this character i'm putting on to get in here to kill somebody what are their likes dislikes and hobbies but he he doesn't have a life of his own and it's always torturing because he's trying to figure out who he is but he is but he doesn't have a he 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 doesn't have a he doesn't know who he is because he's everybody all at the same time but never just himself I, th I really like that idea a lot a lot as like a tortured character who doesn't know what he's doing and I think it's like absurd fun. kind of I my version of absurd would be so good but well because absurd is absurd because he's every race but this is just a rogue changeling who's all about the job and doesn't know who he is I have it, seen somebody make a character that is half Asimar, half fallen Asimar. How that doesn't work though, because the the, the it's two sub races. You can be, you can be fallen and become unfallen, and you can be unfallen and become fallen. It is a thing that happens. Um, as I think you it was do like a stuff. joke character, but it could be like a joke. I've told you about my suicidal immortal bard. Yes, I. He has a name. He has a character sheet uh, that I've been working on. His backstory is in a Google Doc, and it's like 10 pages long right now. It's, but I keep like deleting parts and rewriting it because I'm making like this backstory for him that's tortured and ugly. But then it's like, there's a point where it's just like, oh, this is just too much. I need to cut back to make... It's like, it's like oh, you know, his parents died, and then the following year he lost his home, and then the following year it's always like one thing after another. There needs to be like this this build up and then like he's happy and he gets stuff and then it gets taken away from him and that's like the hard part is like balancing that out enough that he's always had enough bad luck to want to throw himself off the edge of the cliff but then he becomes immortal and then it's like writing the way his backstory is written it's written as if he's a thousand years old writing about his life so it's like it's jambled and it cuts off at some points and it skips forward in time or skips back as like he kind of just writes what he's remembering at the time as he's writing this. And then it, it, it's like more concise towards the beginning, but as you get farther into it, it's like, um, what race did you make him? He's human. You should give him the luck feet. <laughs> no, no, I can't. No. Why? He can never roll bad enough to, to like kill himself. Well, but well, that, no, that's so... part of it. Well, no, no. So the 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 it, the thing is, is so he, he he jumps off a cliff and he dies, and it's written in his backstory that like he see he sees the light and he sees this thing under the water, and then he has this memory, and then he wakes up on the beach, and it's he was he he tries to kill himself, but he was granted immortality. That this mermaid saves him, doesn't realize what it is he was trying to do, goes, oh, life life is a gift and should be treasured. Um, I'm sorry, she thinks he, like, fell or something, and she grants him with immortality, he wakes up, she's gone, um, and he, but he's immortal, and so, he, and he doesn't know what, grant. he, like, has vague visions of what might have given him immortality, but his whole story is, he, he's a lot like Deadpool, where you he can- gets more and more insane. Kind of, pi picture, the reason I went with human is because, like, elves live for a really long time. When you look at it in terms of- of Doctor Who, you have that one character that was granted immortality, and over time she becomes crazy and crazier. Um, when you look at Sao, and, you're, and we're talking about Underworld, um, and they talk about the, the human mind can only hold so much data, right? After a certain amount of time, data becomes corrupt, or you need to get rid of things. You start to go crazy because you've been alive so long, and you know so much, and your brain can't handle the amount the amount of memory that you're using 
right? You've hit, you've hit max capacity. So he starts to go kind of crazy. And so it's him writing about his life and it cuts off, but it's like, he won't write in his journal for like a hundred years at a time. Things happen. He's right about it. And other times he'll remember something or partially remember something and he'll go to write about it. But it's, he's every time he tries to kill himself, he, he just can't die. He, he always comes back or he goes, he goes unconscious. He dies. He, uh, he heals, but he always heals really slowly. So he, he, he can be poisoned and will suffer everything from poison. He'll hit zero hit points. But in a day or two, he'll be back at one and he'll restabilize and then he'll heal back up. If you cut off his arm, it's going to come back. It's going to come back slowly, but it's going back. Or he could, you know, pick it up and put it back on, hold it back on, and it would grow back slowly and very painfully. And that's where he's he's going mad is because this is torture um yeah and his yeah he has a metal loot it's his weapon he took he has no healing spells um he's a bard that no healing spells uh he should have his metal uh metal loot should be a tungsten loot tungsten loot um I, i'll pretty much just like give it the stats of like a hammer or something like a warhammer or a mithril like, oh, it deals, loot it deals a d8 or the bludgeoning and it can't and it can't break it's magical and it much like him his loot cannot break um it's an unbreakable rod <laughs> um it was made make, with an unbreakable rod make it as a custom magical item oh yeah i'll probably do that and then just, just like drop it on like the chart tables in your games for like bards to pick up but his whole journey is, is to find a way to remove immortality, to kill an immortal, so he can finally be at peace. Ooh, do you know your uh, Halloween night one shot? Yeah, killing. Immortals. He should be one of the immortals. That would be funny outside of the fact that he can't die, because within D and D, so within my D and D universe the rule that immortals can only die on a specific day is there, but it also has to be a specific place. There are certain yeah. places where it can happen. The, the, in the real life one, it twists from the Harry Dresden file, from the Dresden files, which is immortals can be killed on Halloween. It is when the veil between worlds is uh, thinnest and thus power, transfers of power can be done. Um, I, I do like the idea of him being there, though. Have him be the one that made the, the three of the four horsemen disappear. And then the master plan is just that the last one would go find the, the party to go hunt immortals to try it so that, that we would figure out how to kill the immortals to then figure out how to kill him so he can finally die. Well, so the purpose of that one shot is you're recruited by death. Who knows how to kill immortals? He knows that's the night he can kill immortals. Um... I could see him like showing up and being like, please, please just kill me. And no one will do it. He's just so annoying and wants it so bad that you can't do it. He's kind of like the, um, the jester in town of Salem. Your goal is to die. And when you try to die, it's very obvious and no one will kill you. Mm. Cause then you win. Right, or you so just make it like a, a funny, funny little quib where it's like, so we kill him, and then he just comes right back. He, he gets all smiling. Yeah, 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 really? Nah, maybe tomorrow. And throws a temperature tantrum. But it won't work tomorrow. <laughs> it has to be tonight. <laughs> she just like, it's like the last like minute <laughs> and just like watching your watch. Please, please, please. And you should have um, one second too late. I'm thinking about it. 1201. Bash. You bastard it did you did this on uh, and then we'll you, and then you get smite the result of that is you get smited <laughs> i think that's how it ends is you end up getting smited all right so human is that we, is that what we decided on i think so because we can throw uh with our highest 
stat points into wisdom, and then we get the plus one anyway. All right, and then do we want to do Outlander as the background? Yeah. You want to do Outlander, or do you want to do Sage? Well, it's a druid, so I... Does Sage not work for that? I feel like Sage is better for Wizard or Sorcerer. Let's pull up Sage and take a look. Uh, Arcana, History, yeah, maybe right. I would say Wizard for that one. Outlander? Outlander. I wish there was um an alchemy chart. Um, there those are homebrew things, I think. I've seen yeah. a couple. You know what book I think you would have fun with for your games? <laughs> what? The Taverns book that Bruin Smith is writing. I thought you I were going to be like remarkable inns in their drinks. I'm like, oh, I have that. No, it's... Let me, let me go find it. Twisted Taverns Project. Okay. Yeah, the Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns. Edition to primarily designed for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, but also functions as a huge collection of inspiring rooms, characters, and more. 17 entirely unique taverns. I like that. Uh, what do we want our dump stat to be? We got the, we got the 15 in Wisdom. 14 con. I feel like we could charisma. be able to hide it. Yeah, we could dump charisma. 8 charisma. Thirteen strength, twelve dex, ten intelligence. Roll it like that. That way we still get the strength boost on weapons. Um, our dex is high enough. You want to do strength 14 and con 13? Switch strength and con? Yeah. Uh, we could do that. Because then we'll bump Wisdom to 16, Strength to 14. Everything will go up by 1. Yeah, we can do that. So we also won't be negative from Charisma. No, we'll still be negative in Charisma. Why? It'll go by 1. It'll be at 9. Uh, 8, 9 is still negative 1. Wow. Oh. I think. Hold on, I'll have to look. Hold on. 14, 13. Um, that's me control. Oh, yeah, 8, 9 is minus 1. 10, 11 is 0. Hold on. If 10, 11 is 0, did I mess up on there? No, we didn't have anything. Was eleven. Didn't have anything that was eleven. Okay, I thought I messed up for a minute there. Okay, so we want to roll with this, or do we want to adjust more? I think that's fine. This is fine. Okay. Uh, mark there. I had an idea of a like a kind of long one shot, like one we would play like in in a whole day, mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. Like more than like three or four hours, but it's just a single story one shot still. But there's like the story itself would take place over like a couple months, but it'd be played in one day, and. 
every in this in this like on this continent the story would take place every week the season changes okay so and it would it would go in order of like the seasons for the year but it would be like okay it's beginning of the year it's fall and then it's spring and then we hit summer and then it's winter and then at the beginning of the next month it starts back over at fall um and then i had a funny idea that if somebody wanted to play what's the race Uh, pick another language for our human. They get common and then they get one language of choice. Do you want to do like Elvish? Sure. Yeah. Keep it simple. Um, okay. What is that? That elf phrase. Half elf, high elf, wood elf, drow. Is drow the one that changes? What do you mean change? No, drow are the dark skinned ones. That's like the underground version of elves. There's like a more fey elf. Changing. No. With not, I don't know if it's the true within D and D universe. Within uh, real life mythologies. Changelings are a kind of fairy, which is a kind of elf. Uh, I, I, a, a sub, sub of elf, I think, is what it comes out to. Because um, changelings are fairies that swapped a child with a fairy. And the... Is that... And the changeling is a human that was brought to the fairy world, raised under fairy. But I think you can consider a changeling part... Uh, they Aladrin. have the pointy ears of an elf. Hold on, I gotta look this up now. Aladrin. Aladrin, never heard of that. It's a sub-race for the elves. Uh, from Mordenkind's Tomb of Foes. They're a playable elf race. Uh, elves native to the Fey Wild, a realm of beauty, unpredictable emotion, boundless magic. The Eladrin are associated with one of the four seasons and have coloration reminiscent of that season, which can also affect the Eladrin's mood and their spells and abilities. Ginny, so D, is Ginny D has an elf that changes like that, I think. So, autumn is the season of peace and goodwill when summer's harvest is shared with all. Um, and then they get, like, different sets of, like, shit, depending on... But they can change between them. Yeah. So they're not stuck in like one of the four like sub sub categories but i had an idea that if somebody had chosen that sub elf race for that kind of world to play in their season changes with the season per week which is kind of cool because it means every week your spells and abilities can change So I looked it up. So changelings within European folklore are a offspring of fairies or elves. So both are considered a changeling. Um, and it works when the changeling is a deformed or embellic offspring of fairies or elves substituted by them superintitiously for a human infant. According to the legend, the abducted child are given to the devil or used to strengthen fairy stuff, and the return of the original child may be affected by making the changed and laughed or by or torturing it. Um, so the changeling is what's left in the human world. Uh, what is it? It's some it's something else. Uh, changeling referred to as the oof, uh, the off or the or is a human-like creature found in folklore for them throughout Europe. So it's, okay, so changelings are European based. Um, a changing was believed to be a fairy that had been left in the place of a human or stolen by fairies. Okay. Um, but it, it works in with elves. Okay. The Eladrin can use face step as a bonus action. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so magically teleport to 30 feet in an unoccupied space you can see. Once you use this trait, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. When you reach third level, face up gains an additional effect based on your season. If the effect requires a saving throw, the DC equals 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your charisma modifier. The effects are as follow. Autumn, immediately after you use the face step, you up, you up to two creatures of your choice that you can see within 10 feet of you must succeed a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by you for one minute or until you or comrade a companion deals any damage to it. Winter is when you use it, one creature of your choice that you can see within five feet of you before you teleport must succeed a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Spring, when you use it, you can touch one willing creature within five feet of you. That creature then teleports instead of you, appearing in an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you. Or summer, that uh, after you use your face up, each creature of your choice that you can see within 5 feet of you takes fire damage equal to your charisma modifier, minimum of 1 damage. So that would be good as like a, uh, as a warlock, because they're a wisdom, not sorry, charisma based. That last one. It's like a, a really weird um, like kind of sub-race. Like, it's not something I would expect like to be a sub-race for an elf. I mean, it works, though. With a fey, ancestri fey, ancestri fey ancestry with elves, the fey, and fairies, pointy ears. Elves, pointy ears. Yeah, I can see. It's also where you would get high elves having affinity for magic. It comes from fairies and the fae. It makes sense to me from a mythology standpoint. I would have... Uh, I th I would have thought that like this kind of a sub-race thing would fit more with like maybe changelings. I think when they add sub-races in other books the sub-races will tie to the race of core but they will uh, but they will add standalone races to other books but they won't add like a, uh, they won't add a race in tomb of foes and then in um guild master's guide to uh to ravnica wouldn't add then a sub-race to the race they added in tomb of foes Hey, Knight PHP, thank you for the follow. Welcome, uh, welcome to the guild. But I can see, I can see where they get it being from, being an offspring, a sub race of elf. It makes elf sense. has a lot of sub races because they're elves, and elves fuck around. <laughs> that, there's no better way to put it. Elves fuck. Do around. you know who doesn't fuck around? Johnny spells. Yeah, I want to make Johnny spells. I like Johnny spells. Um, actually, make... though, hold on. I... Elves fuck around, but if you consult somebody made a table, I think elves have the lowest chance of having children. Though high elves, I know do. Half elves are disgraced because they're half elf. So even when you get to a, a, a fey ancestry elf, it would still be a full elf. Which makes sense because the fey originate. Yeah, it it tur it's weird, but it 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 makes sense to me. Um, oh, yeah, Rowan finally happy. watched all of the Lord of the Rings movies. But she did how she like it. She liked them a lot. The only one we haven't she hasn't seen yet is the last Hobbit. Because okay. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the last Hobbit or the last Lord of the Rings movie, so. You haven't seen a Return of the King. Is that the third one? That's the third Harry or the third uh, Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's the best one. It's on my list of. I, I've also I think I've I've seen the first movie like twice. I've seen the second movie once, and these are like years ago. So it's on my list of things to to watch. Uh, athletics and survival. One of the 
So each of the of the four like seasons, yeah, for their flaws, they only get four each to choose from. Uh, you want to pick a tool proficiency? Uh, sorry, a musical instrument to be proficient in for our, this Outlander. Uh, the flute. Let's go with pan flute. I think that's some, I think that's a specific thing we can say. I think it's flute and there's pan flute. And druid, oh satyr screams pan flute to me, but druid still screams. Um, oh, oh, that's right. I wanted to build a satyr. I wanted to build Zelda. That'd be fun. I like. But Zelda. as a as a as a boy, like her dad. Um, I think he meets Zelda's dad. What we do at the end of season one, they go to the house. No, yeah, and, and in one of the in one of the one shots, I think that's where the party is. Did you watch the one shots at the end of season one? No. You gotta go watch those. Which ones are they? If you go to Fantasy High season one and you scroll to the bottom, it's like episode eighteen and nineteen. It's like RTX Austin and Pax. They're like two hours long each. Watch watch those and then go back because they reference them in season two. Yeah, pan flute's an option, so we'll go what? pan flute. What class is Zelda? I think she's a barbarian. That's what I thought. Um, a while, if you look it up on Twitter, Brennan released their character sheets. Um, the Seven Maidens character sheets. You can read them. Um, okay, so we got the instrument. Uh, pick another language. We get another one. Common, Elvish. What's like a high class? Elvish. Yeah, but other than Elvish. Um. What would be another like snobby language? Elvish is as snobby as it gets. Yeah, but what else would be like? What would be the next thing? Like, I don't want to. I'm a high elf. I don't want to learn common, so I'm going to learn this. Uh, after elvish, it would be common, because dwarves are a very, like, drunky language. I don't know how giants celestial? talk. Celestial? Huh? Celestial? You could pick celestial. It's a, it's exotic, so it's, like, not a lot of people talking. We'll go with celestial. I'm cool with that. Uh, it'll, it could come in handy. Okay, so we get a staff, but I don't think it's a staff that you can hit people with. Would Elvish be considered fey language? Like the language of the fey? Maybe, hold on. I think the chart tells you that. Um, I ran too far back. This is where I really want to, like, just sit and have books. So, Elvish's typical speaker is Elves, and their script is Elvish. When you get to Sylvan, the typical uh, the typical speakers are Fey creatures, but the script is still Elvish. Do you want to use Sylvan instead of Celestial, then? But these aren't an Elf. This is a this is a human, and it's a and it's an Outlander too. So it's somebody who spends a lot of time out and isn't accustomed to fancy high class living oh I forgot we're doing human yeah this is a human uh, do you want to change gosh. that elvish and celestial answer to two other things yeah we can do dwarven and draconic dwarven and draconic no didn't we just do dwarvish and didn't we just do elvish and draconic yeah but those are like oh, well... you want to do elvish and dwarvish how about Dwarvish and Sylvan still, because that's kind of face speaking. It's a druid. It also gets druid crap or uh, druid, druidic. Oh yeah, but I'm not there yet. Okay, so we'll do dwarvish. And then you want Sylvan? Yeah, just because it's Fey and it's a druid, and it's nature. Ah, uh, yeah, technically it's Swarvish and it's Dwarvish. 
There's Dwarvish. Dwarvish. Yeah, there's a V in Dwarvish. I'm not crazy. Oh, I know that. You wrote Swarvish. I did. I am tired. You were thinking Sylvan and Dwarf. Dwarvish. Sylvan. Boop. Okay. Um, you get a space there for correct grammar. Hey, there we go. Um, where was that? Yes, we're back on... Outlander, so we have our staff, we have a hunting trap, uh, a trophy from an animal you killed, uh, want it to be like a, uh, animal claw, owlbear claw, yes, owlbears, can you, can you wild shape into an owlbear? I don't think so, but I would your wild, probably allow Your wild it. shape is also based off of a CR rating. Yeah, I forget what an Albert's challenge rating is. Uh, so then we get 10 gold. Let's get gold out of the way real quick. For a druid, I believe druids have a low amount of money they get. Druids are 2d4. Let's get the dice. It's going to be a 2 and a 4 for a total of 6 times 10. That's 60 plus 10 is a total of 70 gold. I like it. Everybody has something times 10, but monks are just 5d4. That's it. That's all the money you get. You, you don't do worldly possessions, man. Um... But you gotta eat. What would you... Uh, do you want to roll for origin, or do we want to... Uh, let's just roll for origin. Uh, I need a d10. And a dice bag. Give me a ye old d10. That's a 20. You're a 10. Are you a 10? 3, yeah, 5. That's gonna be an 8. So they were a tribal nomad. Um, I will put that up in next to that. Tribal Nomad Outlander. Um, we get the feature, the Wanderer. Ooh, the Wanderer. Because humans don't get any other features or traits. Now, uh, the Wanderer. Feature. Oh, it's just one. Uh, which follow game are you the wanderer? No, it's not a, you're not the wanderer. You're the lone survivor. The courier. And then... What are you in Fallout 3? You're not the lone survivor. That's Fallout 4. I don't remember what Fallout 3's title is. Um, okay, anyways. The wanderer. New Vegas? Uh, no, not New Vegas. In Fallout 3. In New Vegas, you're the courier. In 4, you're the lone survivor. I gotta Google it now. It's gonna drive me insane. Fallout 3 character. The Lone Wanderer. And then Fallout 4, so you have the Lone Wanderer. The Soul Survivor, not the Lone Survivor, the Soul Survivor, that's it, okay. Uh, cancel, uh, okay, the Wanderer. As the Wanderer, you have an excellent memory for maps and geography. You can always recall the general layout of terrain, settlements, and other features around you. In addition, you can find food and fresh water for yourself and up to five other people each day, provided the land offers berries, small game, water, and so forth. So that's a neat thing to have. Um, berry. Let's get to personality traits. Let's roll that D8. Bada boom, that's going to be a seven. I feel far more comfortable around animals than people. I feel bad for the druid in, the, <laughs> in this one shot. That's if somebody picks the druid, though. That's if somebody picks the druid. I will probably pick last. 
and pick whatever anyone else didn't pick. Yeah. Okay, I'll let got... everybody else pick something that they want. We got a three for ideals. That's going to be honor. I dishonor myself. I dishonor my whole clan. Oh. Dishonor your family, your cow, your chicken. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberry. Okay, bonds. How about a boo? Be a three. I will bring terrible wrath down on evildoers who destroy on the evildoers who destroyed my homeland. And you're a tribal nomad. That makes sense. We've been rolling really good for things that make sense. The odds were in our favor. Evil hold on, hold on. Now I gotta do it. See and see, you you play you play the uh, you play our druid, and our druid is friends with Squeak, the rotunda grung, who says stuff like, "The cataclysm has devastated the realm. Refugees are fleeing to the court of Waverns. It's a bloodbath." <laughs> I need to. I want to pay somebody on Fiverr. I need an Ubu voice to do that for me. To to just read that so I can play it on loop because that's fucking funny. All right, let's roll. Go on uh, the e girl rental site. We feel so bad about doing it for something stupid like that. Let's roll for flaw. That's gonna be a four. I am slow to trust members of other races, tribes, and societies. Oh, what do you know? A human who doesn't like other races. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I feel like I want to pick violence as my answer to almost any challenge. As what? The So the flaws, there's six flaws, right? And you could just choose, but it's fun to roll. But in total, the flaws are, at number one, I'm too enamored of ale, wine, and other intoxicants. Uh, number two, there's no room for caution in my life, uh, in, in a life filled to the fullest. Three... I remember every insult I've received and nurse a silent resentment towards anyone who's ever wronged me. Four, I'm slow to trust members of other races, tribes, and societies. Five, violence is my answer to almost any challenge. And number six, don't expect me to save those who can save themselves. It is nature's way for the strong to thrive and the weak to perish. That last one would have been great. <laughs> We can do. We can just pick that one if we want. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just pick that one. <laughs> that one's more funny to go with this. If I if I dishonor myself, I will dishonor my whole clan, and I will bring a terrible wrath down on the evildoers who destroyed my homeland. But don't expect me to save anybody who can't save themselves. It's nature's way. The strong thrive, and the weak they perish. <laughs> It contradicts your bond, but I like it. It's also going to be way more funny if the druid has to save a dying unicorn and is like, nope, don't expect me to save them. It's nature's way. Nature just happened to have <laughs> me summon ten good berries and put them on the ground. <laughs> right in front of the unicorn J just out of reach if you could str if you can take that extra hit that pain of stretching then you've <laughs> then you've saved yourself i've just slightly helped you i've given you the way and you had to take it yourself that's what you have to do that your druid you just, needs this your flaw. Just, just comes out of nowhere <laughs> and opens the golden scroll yeah in the face of the unicorn It is nature's way. Okay. 
that covers that, that covers that, that covers that. I can ditch my bookmark on the background page. And let's scroll back on over to Druid. Why did I jump on? D8 plus con. Uh, so we got a whopping 10 hit points. One, and we have one D eight. Um, and the pan flute. They are proficient in light, and medium armor. shields but a druid will not use any will not wear or use stuff made of leather it doesn't say they won't use weapons made of metal just not armor I'll go, I, it's, I guess it messes with like the druidy vibe of things I don't know um, weapons, they get clubs, daggers, darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaff, scimitars, sickles, slings, and spears. Spears, uh, they get herbalism kit. Uh, they get a saving throws of intelligence and wisdom. Skills, choose to Arcana, Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Nature, Perception, Religion, Survival. And we already have Survival and Athletics. So Arcana, Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Nature, Perception, Religion. Pick two. I feel like Animal Handling has to be one. What do you think about the other? skills pick two arcana animal handling insight medicine nature perception religion uh animal handling and nature animal handling and nature we have a plus zero in nature and now we have a plus one plus two plus two we have the proficiency bonus um okay do you want a wooden shield or a simple weapon uh what's the other weapon that we get uh option second option of things would be a scimitar or a simple melee weapon so i feel like go for the shield yeah because we're probably gonna have a really low ac as a druid uh, right now, our AC would be 11. But we also get um, leather armor. So that's what? Well, uh, leather armor still gets the dex. So hold on. So we get wooden shield. Leather is 11 plus dex. So it would be a 12. So wooden shield, do you want a scimitar or a simple melee weapon? What the? What simple melee weapon choices do we get? Um, anything from the top half of the sheet. So club, dagger, great axe, hand axe, javelin, light hammer, mace, quarter staff, sickle, spear. Quarter staff. 
Well, we uh, so we already have a staff. Okay. Um, but I don't know if that's a. I think that's more of just a walking stick, but and not a weapon. Is a quarter staff one handed? Quarter staff is versatile. So. It can be wielded one handed and two handed. I still think quarter staff. Quarter staff? Okay. Yeah, I'll take some of the quarter staff. So, if it's. If you were to use quarter staff two handed, would it be 1d8 instead of 1d6 then? Yeah. The versatile right. is using it two handed. Oh, okay. I, I didn't see the, the dice on the right. Wait, they they did a fantasy high live at RTX. Yeah, at the Rooster Teeth. They actually did it last year too. When you get to the end of sophomore year, they did it again over Zoom. That's Boys Night. That's a Boys good one. Boys Night. That's a good one. Boys Night was a good one. But that takes place after sophomore year. I will try to go through these tomorrow. Just the oh. two that are under Fantasy High. Yeah. Otherwise, if you watch the stuff at the end of Season 2, you spoil parts of Season 2. I'll, I'm a, uh, I'll probably get through one of them while I'm at work. I don't know. It depends if it's busy tomorrow. I'm with Leo. Mm -hmm. And... Like, I don't think it's going to be busy. Last Friday, it wasn't busy when I was there. It was dead today and dead yesterday. Uh, but we did get three home pluses today, so that was nice. I saw the meme war yeah. between yeah, Dakota I and Brandon. I think JV called Dakota and told him to stop. Uh, the clown one. Did Dakota show you that one? Yeah, he showed me everything he posted. Did, no, but did he show you the ones that Brandon was sending back? Uh, yeah, he did. So that, that clown one we thought was, like, hilarious. Um, and I was like, oh, it's funny, because the last part is about the pixel that I fucked up. Um, but he blames the CME store as part of it. Because he goes, oh, the CME's team. And I go, well, technically that was me. And technically I'm also part of your team. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Your team also fucked up then. Uh, and then we made a joke about, instead of it being a guy painting himself into a clown more, because it was directed at Dakota, that it should have been a dude slowly transitioning into a full furry. Hmm. Back up and then me and uh, me and Adam had to explain to Caitlin what a scaly is. Let's not talk about that on stream. It's eleven plus deck scaly as an armor class of twelve. Is that against TOS? Um, let's not risk it. I prefer to take the safer route and just not risk it. That's why I don't talk politics on stream either. It's not against politics, but I don't need to start arguing about things in chat. Um, okay, we know Druidic. I'm going to also put that under features and traits. Because it's got stuff in there. Okay, then you get spell casting and ritual casting. I 
exponential casting, 8 plus proficiency plus wisdom, so 8 plus 2, so that's the 13. And I guarantee you our spell attack bonus is going to be 5 again because it's proficiency plus wisdom with a first attack of 2 and a wisdom modifier of 3, so that's a plus 5. Um, you don't get wild shape. Wild shape's level 2. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you get spells and the ability to talk. Yeah, level one characters fucking suck. Yeah. Okay, you get two cantrips, two first level spells. Um, technically, we should be calculating spells known versus spells learned. Prepared. Well, prepare. So, well, you have known, and then you have prepared. So you might know four spells, but only can prepare two. And let me see if they put it in here. Because on, like, on, like, a paladin, there is no prepare. There is no not no spells. Paladins always get their whole list. But, like, wizards, you have to choose and stuff. Um, let's see. I can never remember what it is. Uh, to cast one of these spells, you must expend spell slot to prepare the list of spells. Your prepared list of spells is equal to your wisdom modifier plus your druid level. So three so you you know four spells, but you can only prepare two. Um so we get to pick four first level spells. Um I'm going to adjust this again so that I can see chat so I don't miss anything while looking at the spell list again like we did last time. How about your Praise spell? Talos. Praise Talos. Spencer got Spencer was doing that for a while and that and then when I started playing Skyrim and then I was like, Oh, this is this makes more sense now now that I know what Talos mm. is. Me uh, and him would do it all the time when Skyrim came out. We'd just walk around and go, Praise Talos. Well Praise be Talos. Remember the time we went to um Kamikaze and he just wore the robe and walked and he memorized the Talos speech? Uh-huh. That was that was impressive. that was funny. I would love to be able to do that. Two or no two, okay. Let's go here. Do that for the Halloween party. At Caitlin's? No one at Caitlin's would get that though. That's not true. Well, actually, that's not. I don't. I don't. I've been to the party. It's gonna. Be, it, it's her family and a whole bunch of people all around each other sitting talking, and then it's like us, Caitlin, and anyone Caitlin invited from work. Getting shit faced in the corner. Yep. Kind of. Yeah. That'll probably be me. Uh, druid spell. Yeah, we're on a druid. <laughs> I was like, what class are we on? Druid. Okay, yeah. Cantrips. All right. Pick two. I'm thinking druid craft, because if you're a druid and you don't take druid craft, that's dumb. Um, so I think How many cantrips do we get? Two. Shillelagh, for sure. Do what? Shillelagh. Shillelagh? Take a look. The wood or a club of or a quarter staff you're holding is imbued with nature's power for the duration. You can use your spell casting ability instead of strength for the attack. So our spell casting ability, so it would just raise it's you from wisdom. having a, yeah yeah, but it would raise us from having a plus four to a plus five. Mhm. Mm uh, it's a bonus action to cast it, so you can still attack still that attack. same turn. And the weapon's damage becomes a d8. If it's not already so if you're wielding it one-handed you can get the two-handed two-handed damage at the cost of one bonus action for one minute and it's not a canter and it's not uh concentration i like it i like it that's why i put it on my druid it's not good after like the first couple levels you can swap stuff out later i think every time you level up you can swap out your spell stuff yeah. Um, Even if you, like, by core rules, you can't, I feel like that should just be something that's added in. I think, I believe with the, because it's a thing in Tasha's that I think that allowed it, that when you level up, you have the option to, for, like, cantrips. And, no, well, I'd have to look at the rules again. Um, okay, so Shalala is good. We could also do Thorn Whip. Um, I feel like Guidance is good again. Mold Earth could be good. Is Mold Earth uh, from players? 
No, Mold Earth is from Guide to Everything. So Mold Earth is excommunicated. Um, well, also, the range is touch, so you could touch anybody's weapon. It just okay. has to be a club or a quarter staff. Yeah, it just can't be metal. Produce flame would be cool too. You want Shalele? We'll do Shalele. I like Shalele. I think that that's like a cantrip that every druid should take. We'll take the Shalele. All right. And then we're that adds an extra bit of damage. Pick four level one spells. Good berry. Yeah, good berry. Um, we can double up on the healing spells from here if we wanted. Speak with animals. Protection. No. There's protection from good and evil, and there's detect good and evil, right? Ye no, there's detect poison and disease. And protection I thought there from was good a and evil. I thought there was another good and evil. There might be, but druids can't have it. For detect, uh, druids have magic and poison and disease. Then I think it's just protection then, because I th thought clerics had it. We did cleric and I didn't see it. So, purify food and drink seems good for a druid. Detect poison and disease. Protect poison and disease. Detect poison detect? and disease. So... I feel like, yeah, we could do Detect Poison and Disease, too. Purify Food and Drink. So we're looking at Good Berry, Speak with Animals, Purify Food and Drink, and Detect Poison and Disease. Or, okay, do we want to take Purify Food and Drink and Detect Poison? Because a Paladin gets both of those. Okay, then let's do Good Berry. Uh... I've got Good Berry and Speak with Animals. And then, do we want to do animal friendship? Um. And then we'll pick just one other spell. We can do animal friendship. Um. Do we want to do healing word then? We got two heals and two animal things. Yeah, we could take healing, or we could take cure wounds. Just cure wounds. It's action versus bonus action. Yeah. I like the bonus action option, because then when that's something... You can still attack, and then you can do it. Yeah, so it makes you a little bit more versatile. And you have, and you have range. Okay, so we got... Animal friendship. Goodberry. Healing word. And speak with animals. I feel like we all know who's gonna pick. Oh, okay. Do you think Bree would pick Druid or Ranger? Hmm? Would Bree pick Druid or Ranger? Uh, she, well, the last time she played, she played Ranger. And her and Rowan usually fight over Ranger. I have two Rangers. Um,. But I feel like she's going to play Ranger this time. And if she doesn't pick the Ranger, she might go for the Druid. We should have built the Druid keyed towards her and then also built the Ranger keyed towards her and been like, now you got to choose one. Oh, well, I kind of I kind of built this a little like how she would play. That's you why mean, I was like going into like animal handling okay. and the animal stuff. Because hey, I feel like. Works for That's me. her. Also, a spores druid would be what she would play. Really? Yeah, she would play a circle of spores druid. Alright. Because uh, when we play magic, she likes black green. Yeah. When I, I, I uh, told her my idea for the magic decks, 
for a D&D game. And she's like, oh, that's cool. I want to do black green. I'm like, I was thinking of like just five monocolor characters and she got sad. So it's like black or green. All right, we have successfully made four so characters. I wanted to do the traditional five Ravnica guilds as the characters. We are a quarter of the way through the classes. We have eight left. <laughs> well, we can probably do the other eight tomorrow. Yeah, maybe I'll just make a couple off stream. Or I'll start streaming it. Eight because, well, yeah, because what? We'll, we'll both be home by like... I'm home all I'll day probably now. be home... Yeah, you're home all day, but I, I will get home at like 8. Um, just need to get dinner, and then I'm going to leave my house at like 10 to go to work. Mm -hmm. But I can do this over Discord in my car. And then when I get there, just still be on Discord. Because my guy doesn't sleep until like 7 in the morning, so it's not going to matter that I'm sitting in his living room talking until like 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we could probably get like five or six of those done tomorrow at least okay here let, let's make let's make a list because i'll i'll just make some off screen uh off stream what do we want to build on stream we have fighter monk paladin ranger royal so, so i can build the paladin off stream because paladins are paladins and I build a lot of those. Um, so I'll just make like a list here um, of what I'll do, or if I remember to do it. So Paladin, I'll do off screen. Um, can do Warlock off screen because they only get like two spells. Um, Do you want to do what? What do you not want to do on stream? Um, What's Paladin and Warlock, we can do off. Um, fighter, I guess we can do off. Fighters don't seem like they're very difficult to build. Mm -hmm. uh, One more. We've got the, monk, the, ranger, rogue, sorcerer, wizard left. You can build the rogue off stream. I feel like the spellcasters are gonna take a while. Oh yeah, we gotta pick spells. Um, okay, so then real quickly with these four, let's pick their backgrounds right now and just get that out of the way. Um, so Urkin for the rogue. Which one for the rogue? Urkin. Urchin. Yeah. Or do you want to do criminal? Oh, okay. criminal for the rogue, or urchin for the fighter. Okay. Uh, paladin, you want to do knight? Yeah. We want. Oh, we wanted to do noble for the paladin, didn't we? Knight is under noble. So yeah. if I if I pull up the book, and let me jump to. past it way past it hey there's a warlock the um, knighthood among the lowest noble titles most societies but can be the path of a higher status uh, as an emblem of chivalry and the ideals of courtly love you might include among your equipment a banner or other token from a noble lord or lady to whom you have given your heart a chest of sort of devotion this person could be your bond features position of privilege so yeah, the yeah. So the variant feature is the retainers. So if your character has the noble background, you may select this background instead of the position of privilege. 
You have the service of three retainers, loyalty or family. These retainers can be attendants or messengers. One might be a more domo. Uh, the retainers are commoners who can perform mundane tasks for you, but they do not fight for you. They will not follow you into obviously dangerous areas such as dungeons and will leave if they are frequently endangered or abused. So we could go normal noble, but I like the idea of the paladin being the knight. Mm -hmm. um, but he could just be a normal noble, but I feel like... Yeah, I feel like the knight. The, yeah, I feel like just being like the noble knight is cool because you just you still get the position of privilege. You're you can still be of noble birth. You just have a lower title. Oh no! If you choose knight, okay. Frank is built wrong then. Frank is a knight. But has the retain, but do but doesn't have the retainers. He has position of privilege because the uh, the the princess that um, Dakota's character talks about. He and I are both knights, but didn't take that. I thought that we both thought this says choose the. Uh, you have the option to choose retainers. Um, are the princess took the retainers as like her handmaidens and servants, and both um, Dakota and I have the position of privilege. So I feel like noble is better and not doing knight. Um, because if you take knight, you should have retainers. Yeah, that's just how you want to roleplay. Like, your guys' makes sense if you gave them to the princess. No, we didn't give them to the princess. Garrett didn't want to give us nine NPCs. Her retainers would not listen to us. Um it was easier for us to take position of privilege. Uh, or we might, maybe the paladin isn't noble at all. Maybe he's... The paladin being the urchin could also be funny. Came from nowhere and now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. We could do urchin for the rogue and the paladin and then they're just it's two very different paths from the streets one but the rogue became uh, no because then good i think the rogue being the criminal is the best one all right um, okay I, I mean i guess we're gonna we were also gonna do uh urchin for uh fighter. fighter so fighter paladin they're both martial classes the warlock I could see being the charlatan, or I like the idea of the warlock being the hermit. The 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 mysterious hermit is a warlock. Yes. He's lived entirely alone, and he's the warlock. Okay, so I'll make a note of that. I mean, I can make the exception that the paladin is a knight, but has the position of privilege. He could be of noble. He could be the noble birth. That's like the um. The bastard child. No, what's the lowest rank in... Duke is lowest, right? I... No, it's not Duke. No. Lord? It's, um... Oh, I was just looking this up the other day. Hold on. It's, um... Thank you. Noble titles. Baron. Baron is the lowest. So he, he could be he could be a baron. But I believe being a knight is higher than a baron. What's higher? What the, the question is what's higher than the rank? So baron is above knight, but if you're the son of a baron. I think you're still just a baron. No, if you're the son of the baron, you're not a baron, but you're of noble birth. If you're, if we look at the eighth son, he became he became higher by going and branching off on his own. So if you're if you're that like that line of like the oh you're so low within this no one cares about you, and you're the eighth kid and you become a knight, you've raised your status. So have him be the the son of a baron. He's still technically a noble without a title. Yeah, and so he becomes and then, a knight. 
becomes the he's, knight. He's the second son. He would never become Baron unless his brother died. Mysteriously. Mysteriously. So he's so he becomes. I I like we're putting this work into it. It's not gonna fucking come up, um, because it. But it, it, you know what? These are fun level ones we get to play with later oh, if we yeah. want. If we ran a diff like another one shot, um, that would like start at level one again. Yeah. And it was like, it is, and it's gonna be the same ish group of people. Yeah. I personally would be like, okay, you all have to pick a different class this time. Pick a different class. Cause... You could, we could also level them up to level two and be like, hey, you want to play the same characters? Cool. We will level them to two, and then you can play with them again. I just like the idea of being like, okay, well, I don't want the same person every time to pick the same class, because what if somebody else wants to play that class, or... You could have two of the same class, but you could make another character. Yeah, but when you don't have a lot of people playing already, that kind of... kind of fucks up team dynamics a bit. Not really. You could have a druid that's very combat oriented and a druid that's very healing. Same with a paladin. You could have a paladin healer and a paladin tank. Frank uh, Frank is not a healer. He's a damage dealer. He could be a healer, but I, I, I don't play him as one. I still like my cleric uh my cleric druid it would be the ultimate healer can you double up on spells what do you mean so like uh druid and cleric get can have the same cantrips mm -hmm. so can i have can I use the same cantrip twice? It's a cantrip. You can cast a cantrip as many times as you want. I did not know that. You didn't know you can use cantrips more than once? Nope. So, okay. So let me explain this. So this is how spells work. You have <laughs> cantrips and then level 1 through 9 spells. Level 1 through 9 are what are called slotted spells. You might know, you might have, as a wizard, let's say you have two level 1 slots and one level 2 slot. Oh, no, this is better. This is a warlock. Because warlock, oh, no, warlock. Yeah, warlock. So warlocks start with one level 1 slot, and then they get two level 1 slots, and then it changes, and then they have level 5 slots. Sorry, they have level 3 slots and they lose the level 2 slots. So you can have a level 1 spell, and you can cast Goodberry using a level 2 spell slot. In some cases, with like Healing Word or Lay on Hands, or Healing Word or Healing Hands, casting it at a higher level increases how the spell works. It does more. You cannot take a level 2 spell and cast it using a level 1 spot. You can't go down, but you can go up. You could use a level 9 spot to cast Speak with Animals. It would do nothing extra, but it's a slot that can be used to cast a spell. Um, cantrips are spells that can be cast willy-nilly. Druidcraft allows you to craft one small thing or make a flower bloom. You could spend all day, every six seconds, making a flower bloom with Druidcraft. You'd be tired at the end of the at the end of the day, but you're not expending a spell slot. Cantrips can be cast whenever, uh, almost whenever, depending on action, but as often as one would like. That's why message is really good, and that's also how Sage um, in our campaign uses Mage Hand so often to do have it do things and move around, is because it's a cantrip. Mm. It doesn't cost him anything. Um, I may need to switch my cantrips on my bard then. What did you make them? I don't remember. There was one of them is vicious mockery. <laughs> yeah, you can cast vicious mockery every turn if you wanted. 
Um, then, then what you have, so you then you run into the thing of you can't cast two spells in a turn. So if you have a level one spell that is an action and a level one spell that is a bonus action, you cannot cast both um, in one turn. But if you have a level one spell that is an action and a cantrip that is a bonus action, you can cast both. And vice versa. If you have a cantrip that is an action and a level one spell that is a bonus action, you can cast both. I believe. Uh, my cantrips for the bard are Vicious Mockery and Message. So Vicious Mockery is good. Message is also good because if we were in a situation where we can't talk, right, and I need to talk to Dakota, you can message me, I can talk to you, and then you can message Dakota and relay the message. And you can do that a whole bunch. It's the it's the utility versus combat. Message isn't a great combat thing unless what if what if you're in a combat against a creature that's blind uh, but can hear really well so you can't talk. Message is great because it doesn't require talking. It's all in your head. I think you whisper it, but I think you can can also just convey it in your head. Art also just doesn't have. Um, any like combat oriented cantrips uh, combat oriented cantrips are like fire there's things that can be just like eldritch blast so warlocks like I said only have one spell slot at level one you know two spells and you have one spell so you can cast one thing but eldritch blast is a cantrip and you can cast that thing all day long. Um, and when you hit a when you hit level three and you get to pick some of your other stuff, you can make it so Eldridge Blast has a range of three hundred feet. If a character has an average movement speed of thirty feet per turn, and I can hit you at three hundred feet, I can fire that off every round until you show up. And it's within my range to hit you without needing to roll with disadvantage. It is, a, it is a fun thing, being able to hit things at 300 feet. So if you if you took your turtle and multi it triple multi-classed into Warlock and got its level 3, got the cannon mounted on you, and you took the, the abilities within Warlock and give it a range of 300 feet, you could cast it from your back, from your cannon, and launch it at 300 feet. I know... Well, wait, hold up. So there, I remember that there is a ability from the bards. Yeah. I believe where I can steal a cantrip from another spellcaster class. I think it's temporary. No, it's like a, I pick one cantrip and I get to just have that cantrip. No. And I remember I was talking with Garrett about it, and he was like, no, you can't have Eldritch Blast. That's a Warlock exclusive thing. But in text, it includes Warlock cantrips. Then, yes, you would be able to take Eldritch Blast. But I don't remember what it was that gives me that. Uh, you need to flip through every book and look at the Bard stuff. You could probably find it. I think it was either from Sanathar's or Tasha's that said I would get that. I don't know, man. Four. Did you try Googling Bard 5th Edition Steal a Cantrip? Did not. Try Googling that. probably find what you're looking for.
Oh, yeah. Cool, this will be easy to print out, because I can either tell if oh. to print the first page or print only one. I remember what it was now. It's okay. taking the Magic Initiate feat. Let's me steal a, a cantrip from another spellcasting class. Is it and a I player's can handbook feat? I believe... It is. Let me look. Hold on, I'm flipping through it. Yep, it's from Player's Handbook. Okay, let me take a look. Choose a class Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard. You, you learn, learn two, two cantrips cantrip. of your choice from yep, the classes. Yeah, you, you can take list. Eldritch Blast. <laughs> yep. So when I can pick my next feat, which is the next level, if I roll it into Barbarian, because I'll be a level 5 Barbarian and can take that. Uh, no, I... level 4. Four. Okay, so then either way, next level, because it'll be a level four bard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can do that. It's four, and then... eight, 16. Four, eight, 16, I think. Um... In, and in addition, you choose one first level spell from the same list. Then I can take. I just have to. Find an artificer to um, put a cannon on my back. And picking warlock is good because you're a bard and you're already charisma based, so it works. Because if you picked something from a different from like cleric, or cleric or druid, you would have to use their spellcasting modifier. Would a druid ranger multiclass work? Um, druids don't get spells so oh, sorry rangers don't get spells um so i think so i don't think rangers get spells i think it depends on the ranger you pick mm, hold on i'm wrong with i'm also pretty sure the best damage dealing rangers are melee-based rangers. Oh no, rangers do get spells. They only have a couple. Two first levels. Uh, by level 20, they have two fifth levels, three fourth, three thirds, three second, four first, but 11 cantrips. Um, they are a, ah, but you don't get spellcasting till level two. I also get another cantrip on my next level as a bard. But I would be at five cantrips at that point because of magic initiate. Yeah. They're wisdom based. Oh, rangers are wisdom based. So it and then druids are also wisdom based. So yeah, you could multi-class in that and it would work. Is good barrier is also used by rangers. Yes. Yes it is. Uh. All right, I think we're gonna. I think I'm gonna end stream. Yeah, I'm gonna then... uh, head to bed right now. Yeah. Cause I have to go to Encino, and that takes me about forty minutes to drive there. I'm sorry. That's, that's fine. I'm normally going to sleep at this time, but. No, it's just uh, it's a boring drive. All right, I'm going to end chat. So let me switch on over. The other screen. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. If you're still watching, if you're watching over on YouTube's, whenever I remember to upload this over, uh, thank you for watching on there. Remember to you know like, subscribe, do all that, do all the shit. I don't care if you do it, if you don't do it. Have fun with it. Um, we'll be back hopefully streaming again tomorrow. We will be doing four more characters, and I will be doing four characters tomorrow off stream to kind of get these out of the way, get these ready for our game on Saturday, which will not be recorded. Um, and probably not talked about because there's a, uh, 
half of the session we're going to run up on YouTube already that I ran before. Uh, we're doing Last of the Unicorns for anyone that watched that video. It's changed since then, but we never did get that second session done because uh, we had to end early that day, as sad as it may be. Um, but I'm rambling again, so thank you all for watching. Um, I don't think... Do uh, Is there anybody online that I actually know that we can go host, host a raid? Um, no, no, there's nobody, nobody online. So we're just going to let the stream die off into oblivion. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next stream. Peace out.